the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Unto him who sits on the throne, blessing and honor. The Lamb that was slain, glory and power, glory and power, forever and ever, forever and ever, and ever reign, forever. Please sit down. We take our time to worship him like this because you see, hallelujah. Do you know in an average church service, please listen, in an average church service, many things happen to people that they never are aware of. Impartations, healings. Your assignment as a ministry is to make the atmosphere conducive that's your job you have no power to change any man listen the assignment is to make the atmosphere conducive for the healing presence of jesus for deliverances to happen you see that when the atmosphere is set any utterance that comes from that glory will produce results it becomes easy for deliverance to happen don't we are organized people but you see we must be careful so that we do not bring tradition and box the potentials of the holy spirit when we come before him it is because we are aware of our inadequacy so he becomes the lord of the service there is a system of coordination of course but he must be allowed to reign supreme this is the secret let me tell you this is why many people never experience the power of god in church because we don't allow him we come as men of god and want to interrupt him the ushers come to interrupt him the worship team comes to interrupt him but if we can align with him the reason why you are coming is first before you love because you love god second because you are coming to grow thirdly you expect his power to touch an area of your life is that true yes so is 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 time wasted if you come and commit whatever number of hours you spend here and you cannot leave back with an evidence many of you here this is your first experience think how terrible it will be that you left wherever some of you are pastors that came to refire your spirit and get an impartation some of you are leaders in various places how could you come and just watch a man talk for a few hours and share the grace and go 
is not only sin is wickedness it's not only sin against God it is wickedness hallelujah our job is to make sure you experience God in his entirety the program was so designed that every face tackles an aspect of your life and that by the time we are sharing the grace what escaped praise and worship will not escape the fire of prayer what escaped the fire of prayer will not escape revelation you see that so the programs are designed we are not religious people trying to advance a man's ministry god is bigger than that this is serious business of changing people's lives are we together we are excellent people but we are not stupid people when it comes to transformation i'm not um, you can dress well and look well but the moment it comes to the destinies of men we must be serious we must take it seriously because we are stewards by grace and we must be accountable unto god hallelujah praise the lord i'm going to speak briefly um but I, I want to pray i just want to pray as i was sitting i sensed in my spirit that there were people who needed um a touch of the holy spirit and and for various reasons these things happen this touch can bring deliverance this touch can bring direction when the holy spirit touches you um there are many reasons why he touches you sometimes even you who is imparted you may not know why but for many people that is the answer to your prayer the anointing comes as the answer to your prayer it is not faith that answers your prayer faith connects you to the anointing it is the anointing that does the job your faith is your conviction faith does not bring results on its own the job of faith is to connect you to the power of god it is the power of god that supplies the possibilities hallelujah so you shouldn't be here having sicknesses having burdens and then we're just preaching and then it's not it's not working in your life so i want to pray for you hallelujah there are families that are represented that deserve the touch of god and um i know that he will bless us he will lift us in the name of jesus christ hallelujah just two things the lord is imparting the spirit of wisdom this is this is what this is what the lord is speaking to me and this is not everyone but that anointing there is a grace there is an unction that is going to come on several people is an unction strange grace for wisdom grace for wisdom supernatural grace for wisdom all the overflows whether one two three doesn't matter where you are um, it, it there are exact impartations that are coming on people right now let me just do that job by the spirit i stretch my hands by the spirit and i command it so now i declare i send an anointing upon the word let the performance of the word be accomplished everywhere inside overflow one overflow two overflow three i command it so in the name of jesus wisdom this is what many of us need in this season is coming upon you that grace that grace wisdom to surmount mountains mountains everywhere there are people following online that grace the angel of his presence is bringing upon your life the hand of god is resting upon you wisdom the spirit of wisdom receive it i know that we're all getting it but there are specific people that this is for you will not escape it once it's for you the word of the lord will look for you will look for you no matter where you are for as long as you are within this vicinity the word of the lord will search for you and that impartation will happen in your spirit in the name of jesus i speak it i command it i decree it as an ordinance in the spirit everyone who must carry this level of grace wisdom wisdom that will bring an end to mountains that stand before you in the name of jesus christ hallelujah the second thing that i see the lord imparting is the healing anointing now this doesn't happen all the time but i'm seeing it happen healing anointing the lord wants to bring a new level 
of the healing anointing in the name of jesus christ there are people that must carry that anointing the lord is saying i have been waiting upon you there are people whose bodies need the touch of the spirit not just you being healed the healing anointing that grace you have seen it in your dreams you have seen it in visions in prayer meetings god has told you but in the name of jesus i activate that dimension in the name of jesus take that anointing take that anointing the healing grace the healing power of jesus the healing power there are some of you who are visitors this is your first time coming but the lord brought you because you need an encounter with that unction in the name of jesus receive receive of that grace let there be a transference of that grace That dwells in the secret place of the Most High. Take it half. You reign, you reign, Lord, you reign, you reign, you reign. This is what God is doing. Restoration. Opportunities. Restoration of anointings. Graces. Graces. Connections. In the name of Jesus. I'm hearing it in the spirit. Restoration. Restoration. God is creating scenarios in people's lives. Recreating it again. Recreating it again by the spirit of God. Restoration, restoration, restoration. Make sure you believe it. Restoration, restoration, financial restoration, spiritual restoration, restoration in career, opportunities, relationships. Listen, there are people here, the dimensions of God you used to experience. Something happened and it looked like that portal just closed. I'm hearing in my spirit restoration. Let there be a reopening of those doors. The gate that was open in the spirit that gave you access to that dimension. Let it be reopened. Regardless of the reason why it was closed, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, let it be open. 
na 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 relationship with the Holy Spirit is the access that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the wisdom that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the power that you seek. In your relationship with the Holy Spirit is the influence. If we will spend half the time we waste around committing to his presence, the pursuit not looking for rema not looking for power not not all of these things focusing staying with him there are many prayer warriors that will never find his presence because we have turned it into idolatry there are many fasting giants that may never find him because they are just motions there are many bible study giants that may never find him because we shroud ourselves in activities the power is not in the activities it's in the sincerity of your heart your pursuit it's not in the activities it says and ye shall seek me and find me when you search for me with all your heart please sit down if you can a lot is already happening now just allow those under the anointing this is koinonia I like you to be sensitive tonight as I teach we have begun the year expect impartations impartations mean that God is doing something impartation means that there is a transference you see that there is a transference of possibility and whether you are in any of the overflows let me tell you truthfully speaking the only advantage that those inside have over those outside is just the convenience that that's it 
spiritually speaking those things don't make any there's no difference at all doesn't matter what nation doesn't matter where it's just our psychology to think we are nearer to the man of god god can speak to someone in overflow three smuggling himself somewhere near the wall nobody knows and then god just visits him like that this is the ministry of the spirit hallelujah I want to teach you something tonight that I really believe with all my heart will grant you access to not only have intimacy with God but it will grant you access to walk in the reality of signs and wonders I will continue to teach these things is my assignment to guide us to help us become spiritual people you don't become a spiritual man by frowning your face. You don't become a spiritual man by being a talkative. You don't become a spiritual man by show of religion. It is a dimension in the spirit you climb to. When you are there, everything around you knows you are there. It's an exact location. There is no guess about it. Hallelujah. When God gives a word, by now you already know that every time prophecy comes, there is always a commitment there is always a commitment hallelujah in overflow one there are two people the power of god is coming on please bring them inside i want to prophesy to them you are here working miracles i worship you I worship you. You are here, wiping every tear. I worship you. Waymaker, waymaker, miracle work on this street, light in the dark. the word for those people the lord says even the lawful captive shall be delivered even the lawful captive i break the siege of witchcraft there is strange operation of witchcraft i command the siege of witchcraft be broken in the name of jesus even the lawful captives shall be delivered i will contend with them that contend with you I will contend with them that contend with you. Even the lawful captives, the siege over your families, the siege is broken right now. The siege is broken. I decree it and I declare it by the authority of the kingdom. The siege is broken the siege is broken the lord says i should continue prophesying it that the siege is broken is broken i use this as a point of contact to speak to everyone under the sound of my voice if there is anything sitting on anyone's destiny in the name that is above all names i stretch my hands and i command in the name of jesus that every chain that holds the destiny of anyone here I command that that chain is broken right now in the name of Jesus over your life and over your family I declare that it's broken in the name of Jesus please sit down sit down just allow me to do my mad thing here for a few minutes we'll get back to the word the spirit of death oh death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory i shut the mouth of the grave i shut the mouth of the grave 
why am I prophesying this I shut the mouth of the grave 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 in the name of Jesus over every family I shut the mouth of the grave I shut the mouth of the grave I shut the mouth of the grave Listen, let me tell you, hold on, that's not what I'm teaching, but you see this grave is a spirit. There are people there that can call people who are alive to come and join them. I have a series there and I will teach you death, hell and the grave. I will teach, the, we have a lot this year, but you see, this grave you see is not a pit. There are people it was it not a conversation that was happening Lazarus and they said please let somebody go there that means someone that is out that's why I said oh grave where is your victory that the grave can choose a person and say bring him to join us I say it again the mouth of the grave the mouth of the grave is shot over every family shot over every individual hallelujah listen don't mind the physical actors that act it can be accident it can be anything it's a lie there is a call the grave as a living thing can pick somebody and say let him come and join us i've seen the spirit of death you know that so for me it's not it's not a it's not a mystery at all hallelujah do you know i once saw a vision of someone a real vision i saw the person already buried but in the physical he was walking happy and it didn't reach three months that person died in the realm of the spirit this is already done with the person is alive having plans whereas the grave has called him pray in one minute and shut the mouth of the grave pray don't be afraid oh death where is your sting Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, oh death, oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? I curse you by the God of heaven. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray, pray. Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Pray for your family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hold on. Let me talk to that woman. You see this woman? Leave her. She knows why she's coming. Come. I'm looking at this woman and I'm seeing a woman that has already died. It's over with her. This woman I'm seeing. She has been seeing it. Dead men calling her calling her in the night some of you have seen it people who have died that's the grave calling you pray again and say i reject that call i reject that call hallelujah Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? Oh death, where is thy sting? Oh grave, where is thy victory? We challenge the gates of the grave. We challenge the gates of the grave. 
we challenge the gates of the grave hallelujah please sit down just help those under the anointing Hallelujah. This, this is what should be when you come into the presence of God. Burdens lifted, plagues stopped, not time wasted. Not time wasted. Only God knows how many obituaries were averted just by having access to intimacy with the Holy Spirit don't live your life anyhow becoming a victim of the wickedness let me teach you something a am I boring you am I wasting your time next time you have a dream and you see dead people calling you don't get up and just jot it down whether it is raining or not if you have to cancel your job for that day is it not when you are alive you go for work if you get up and see dead people where I don't care whether it's your own mother or father, once you are dead, it's gone. The familiar spirits use the face of individuals. Some of them can be our loved ones. They come and they dine with you. There are encounters. There are people who have died in Christ. They are called the spirits of just men made perfect. I have encountered some of them. But this one is death calling you, calling your children sit down allow the devil come and destroy you that's what happens to people they don't do anything about it and you see and because they don't act one day you find out that you just get up whereas it was concluded remember the book of job they were discussing in heaven and the man was living happily and in one day everything happened that an entity has left this realm does not mean it has stopped functioning this realm is not the only realm where people function there are powers that operate they can go out of this realm and call people jesus knew that principle that's why he stood and called lazarus back this is how to be spiritual not just for yourself to help other people now with this knowledge god can reveal to you something the devil wants to do about somebody because you know what to do about it you don't sit down and it happens and say hey i saw it oh you stop it this grave you see read what solomon said about it in the book of proverbs it can never say enough this grave it keeps opening hell and enlarge itself opens receive people finds young people just when people are at the prime of their life that devil comes from wherever don't ever make death look like a mystery it is as predictable a spirit as sickness innocent people plan their lives i don't know why i started talking about this plan their lives and do all do you know when the devil finds out that there's nothing he can do with your life he can't make you live god he can't make you this the next plot is to kill you whether or not you die in christ or not at least you are dissociated from your body it's still a plus for him make sure you insist that you are here for a long time there is work to be done give birth to children and before the ch children are still young you die and leave them and leave them in the hands of wicked people it's not to make you afraid it's to let you know that death can it has it attempts death is boastful he said oh death where is your victory it's important to go where you know God is. You don't know when your word and your deliverance. When, when, when you say invite people, it's not because a man of God is looking for fame. Somebody is the answer to a family that the devil is about to crash. Just coming to stand in the cold. And that's the end of it. 
Alleluia. Death. We're ending that plague. You can live long, you can live strong by choice and with confidence. I choose life. You choose life for yourself. Choose life for your children. If they are too small to choose, your decision can cover for them until they get to the age of discretion. Don't sit down and allow the devil say that this one is small. You see how the devil kills children as much as he kills people. Hallelujah. Let's try to discuss something. Thank you so much for those of you who are coming for the first time. This is Koinonia. This is Koinonia. First John. We are looking at the epistle of John. I want to share a few things about the spirit life. God is helping us to build capacity and he's helping us to become spiritual people. And part of the the parameters for measuring spirituality like i've taught us is first our conformity to the image of the christ and then second our comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom but then there is a dimension of it that i want to introduce to us tonight and is a dimension where christ is seated at the heart of every individual and i'm not just talking of born again born again is a decision is a willingness to embrace the lordship of christ but there is a journey that a believer must follow to get to a point where christ is experientially seated in his heart that place is the place of power that place is the place of authority that is the place where satan death hell and the grave can come to you and go back because they do not have anything in you there is a realm of immunity i'm trusting god that we rise as believers to dimensions where we no longer are the receptors of these basic things of the kingdom but we become the distributors of this reality is that true first john chapter 2 and verse 15 a popular scripture here i want us to examine it just listen to me carefully first john chapter 2 thank you jesus first john chapter 2 first john chapter 2 verse 15 the holy spirit is speaking to me again and i will bring laughter to her family and i will bring laughter to her family i will bring laughter you will hear again the sound of laughter the sound of melody you will hear the sound of laughter you will hear the sound of laughter that's what the spirit of the lord is saying you will hear the sound of laughter you will hear the sound of laughter love not the world neither the things that are in the world please follow me carefully if any man love the world the love of the father is not in him verse 16 for all that is in the world the lust of the flesh the loss of the eyes the pride of life is not of the father but is of the world 17 and the world passeth away and the loss thereof but he that doeth the will of god abideth forever go back to verse 15 there is a journey into what we call carnality carnality is not um it's not necessarily a bad word it's just a description of a state please listen carefully when we say a man is carnal it's not supposed to be an insult are we together the bible says for to be carnally minded is death but to be spiritually minded is life and peace so the bible gives us the progression of carnality carnality is not materialism carnality leads to materialism are we together carnality is not unrighteousness carnality leads to unrighteousness listen very carefully and this is how the journey starts number one 
love not the world the word world there is the world system the governing system the system of activities that are in the world it's not just talking about um, um it's not just talking about the cosmos alone you see that it's not just the word cosmos like the social system of the world alone but it also has an extension is the word aeon the the thinking pattern the mentality the system of operation the modus operandi that comes with the world system listen it says love not the world so that is the foundation that's how believers or people become carnal the starting point of carnality is an attachment an attachment to the system listen not receiving cars and houses that's not carnality not prosperity not poverty no that, that's not what i'm talking about many people have taught carnality from a very legalistic and religious standpoint and have robbed people of enjoying the blessings of god that's not what i'm talking about at all but then he says the word there is eros love attachment attachment so the first thing is that when a believer is about to um, begin to walk with God the first dimension of the workings of the spirit is to be able to culture and pull your attachment to this system and the appetites in this system you can have things but when they have you it's called carnality the mistake of the rich fool was not his possession he said my soul find rest that was his mistake not not the abundance but that the basis for his rest was in the supposed acquisition of those things are we together now so the bible says love not the world is a warning is a warning that if you want to be spiritual do not be attached that means every one of us by default born of a woman there is a probability to being attached with this system the flamboyancy that is associated with this system their their desires and their lusts and their appetites that this is something that by default we can become victims of then he moves further and says neither the things that means it is possible that you hate the world and all of that but the things that are there you can be attached to them you see but let me tell you forget about walking with god when the things of this world are glued to you the bible we're, we're, we're still on that journey it says if any man loves the world that means he gives you a little test like saying if any man has a pounding headache there are signs that that man probably has malaria so he's saying that you can check the depth of your love for the the love of god that is at work in you you can easily check it by your attachment your attachment the same way you check your temperature your pressure and all of these things that you can check that love dimension and then it categorizes them into three it says all that is in the world the next verse 16 for all that is in the world can be categorized into three number one he calls it the lust of the flesh the limitations that come to you by reason of wearing a human body if you did not possess a body there are certain things that cannot happen to you but now because you sustain a material body that there are side effects to having this body are we together now and he's saying that you must walk with the holy spirit to culture the attachment that can happen to things by reason of wearing a body and then the second he says the lust of the eyes the limitations that come upon your life on the strength of the things you see how many of you know that the bible says the eye is the light of the body there are things if you did not have capacity to see they will not be planted in your heart the word imagination comes from the word image and that's how we think we think in pictures so you your 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 eyes creates a perception and it latches onto your heart and then it begins to be the basis of your not responding to the impulses of the spirit 
Are we together now? The lust of the eyes. And then the third is called the pride of life. You've heard me teach it. The pride of life is different from pride. You cannot have the pride of life until you have obvious achievements. You can have pride whether or not there is anything that has been achieved. But the pride of life is the vain glory and the self-glorification that is a derivative of obvious achievements. Like Nebuchadnezzar having built Babylon. He said, make me a 90 feet gold of my stature and that at the sound of all the music instruments, let all men bow. That's the pride of life. The pride of life is what happened to Lucifer. I will exalt myself above the stars of God. I will be like the Most High. Until he was charged with iniquity. Are we together now? And so he's saying that if you can manage the effect and the influences of these temptations in your life. That the love of the Father is in you. And that this will culminate into a life that is spiritual. Listen. The depth to which the power of God flows through you. All these miracles, these signs and wonders that you see, they don't just happen because hands are laid. Please, I, I like us, let's, let's be, um, please come David Dam. Let's, let's not make a fool of ourselves here. There is a limit to which you can walk in the anointing just by laying on of hands. There are dimensions you have to dig that spiritual well by yourself. A track record that is known by principalities and powers and angels and all the forces in the heavens. You don't just speak and then God, it looks like God owes your word attention. No, sir. No, sir. For I am a man under authority. And the authority recognizes my submission and my loyalty. And on the strength of my submission, I say to one, go, and he goes. I say to another, come. It's not my eloquence. It is the authority and my degree of submission to that authority. Are we together now? So he says, love not the world. Brothers and sisters, let me tell you. Thank you, Dibdam. This is the problem that Jesus came to solve. You see, if you have an encounter with Jesus, listen. He's not going to ask you whether you believe in the Old or New Testament. That, that is nonsense. Jesus is not going to ask you all those things. Jesus is not going to ask you and say, which part of the Ten Commandments did you keep or which law? Or, no, no, no. He's going to ask you one question. Just one question. His emphasis is to see whether you are seated at the throne of your own heart or he's seated at the throne of your own heart. It's called Christ's self-centeredness and self-centeredness christ-centeredness is when christ is the epicenter the pivot of your life this is what jesus came to give us it is from the standpoint of that state that everything you have can profit you god so designed that you can acquire things without Christ being at the center of your heart. But that becomes your undoing. Because they will destroy you and wreck your life. Brothers and sisters, I don't care how many hours you pray. I don't care how many Bible study concordances you have. I don't care how many services you have per week. If you have not assumed a posture in the spirit where Christ is at the epicenter of your heart you are carnal period period you are as carnal as the word carnal it's true it's not an insult it's a description it's a state of a believer you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you pray in tongues you are spiritual not just to the degree to which you access revelation by diligence you can commit your mind and your spirit to access light without being spiritual theologians have spent years i mean remember the scribes and the pharisees they were carnal yet they had the five books of moses out of heart so knowing the scripture by head is not necessarily a proof of spirituality it can be helpful provided christ is at the center of your heart the foundation for a life of greatness listen the foundation for a life of the miraculous 
any man and woman of God you see around the earth that God is using mightily to do great things carrying and hosting the presence of God that individual has true sacrifice come to a point where Christ is at the epicenter of their lives not money not fame not cars not houses are we together not wife not husband not marriage that does not mean you are unconnected to these things but that Christ sitting in your heart now gives value whatever comes comes under his authority if you don't get this this is this is this is power 101 if you don't get this thing forget about spiritual power there are fasting giants who fast with them they are getting lean but they are still sitting on the throne of their heart no side won't work that way christ must become the center of your life and you can know your attachment your attachment to things your attachment to this system Is God helping us? When your life becomes Christ-centered, your life will speak particular languages. Number one, thy will be done. Thy will be done is the language of men and women who have crucified flesh and self and that Christ is entirely allowed to be glorified in their lives. Number two, that all that is done in and through your life becomes to reveal Jesus. The revelation of Jesus becomes the obsession of your life. Not the revelation of your prestige. Not the revelation of your educational prowess. Not the revelation of oratory and money and power and influence and all of these things. The revelation of Jesus in and through your life. This is a language that is a commitment from a life that Christ is at the center. Number three, that any and all that you do becomes for his glory. The Lord's prayer, for thine is the kingdom, the power and glory. Thine is the kingdom. I receive all of the blessings, but yours is the kingdom. Yours is the power. Yours is the glory. The Bible says, and they glorified God in me. Do you know, listen, do you know the reason why the more I, by the grace of God, keep learning about God, I am seeing why it is hard, come David Dam, why it is hard for many people to get the attention of God and to be committed with certain things remember my miracle service message last friday can god trust you that's a powerful message go and sit down and listen to it because what god gives you is a measure of his trust for you it's, it's as simple as that if there are dimensions you are praying about and say lord lift me up take me high and god says no way stop praying and saying oh god ask lord what is it in me that is the resistance what is in anointing that god cannot give you what is in prosperity that god cannot give you mike shared a very powerful scripture here that he that did not spare his son but offered him freely shall he not much more with him give us all things but god is not a fool just because he said i will give you all things does not mean you just say come and carry all things he will vet your heart until he finds himself there are we together think about the things that we pursue just think for a moment list them in your mind you don't have to chorus them but list them money career power anointing revelation children wife husband house whatever it is cars and all of that none of these things in themselves destroy but when they come to you the state of your heart can make them evil or good are we together now yes 
Do you know the foundation for jealousy? Listen, the foundation for envy, backbiting and all of these things is one word, self. 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 It is because I want to give a perception that I am a big man. So if somebody calls me Joshua Selman, I now say, where is the apostle? You didn't add it. You see that? My ego resonated with something that is locked up within me and i react so i say this this guy you are not you are disrespecting me you are trying to say i'm not anointed you see that and this is our lives on earth are it's like an an action theme people acting out the level of flesh and self and carnality sometimes we call it spirituality but it's really carnality really carnality love not the world brothers and sisters i show you a secret to rest this is where high blood pressure comes from hello hello this is where high blood pressure as the doctors they will tell you self-inflicted worrying my ego is on the line see right my ego is on the line if this thing is not done i prophesy to david dam if that word does not come to pass they will now think i'm not an accurate man of god so my ego is on the line i'm not desirous of the prophecy to happen because i want to see his life change i am more concerned about the validation of my anointing than his own change that's the problem the scribes and the pharisees had it was not healing they would not have a problem if it happened through their hands but the fact that it didn't happen through their hands they just found an excuse and say madam don't get healing on sunday and jesus said what are you saying if your donkey falls inside a well on sunday will you leave it there and say i'll come back on monday you like money and you are talking this woman her, her health is more than your own donkey if your donkey falls inside a well won't you go and get it hypocrites jesus told them do you know if i can bring every one of us to a point where nothing in this life can take the place of christ i have brought you to a place is a level in the spirit where you will watch satan like this and he will watch you like the gulf that separated the rich man and abraham this is how you will stand truly speaking this is what empowers satan in our lives you know i've taught this here in this house comes when satan comes satan is not as accurate as we think he is listen when he comes he wants to know what is in your heart and the way he will know it is by touching areas in your life at random if he touches your relationship and you don't react he says it doesn't mean anything to you he touches money that's the one that's the area he gets for many of us he just touches your your hundred naira disappears and say no way we are fasting in this house who can and the devil says that's it that's it you think because you mention fasting god is glorified no that fasting is a is a revenge it's an emotional revenge mission your anger and your carnality is making you use a spiritual cover but it's still carnality and you put everyone under pressure nobody is eating six to six whoever did this and that and then the devil says that's it and let me tell you what he will do he will sit on your finances and rubbish your life because he knows that that is the area in your life that would distract your prayer life distract he doesn't have to stop you from praying studying the bible it's too hard he just comes to the center of your heart and touches one thing that will boomerang in every other area of your life think how hard it is for him to try to stop your prayer life stop your word life destroy your husband destroy your wife destroy your relationship it's too hard so he comes to your heart because whatever is in your heart is the control center truly of your destiny you see that all of a sudden they withhold your salary for two months and a man who was a gentle loving godly sincere born again committed church worker all of a sudden becomes a wild animal in two months because the devil got it there so instead of him saying pastor alpha beat your wife beat your children beat your relatives destroy your spiritual life he just comes and says, pastor alpha what is that one area that christ is not yet lord over when he captures it it will create all the effects that he wants
satan cometh to me what is he looking for something that gives him an attachment and let me tell you that thing is what we call lost an attachment i hope you like what i'm, pre I'm preaching this is a deliverance message yes it is yes it is yes it is i watch do you know brothers and sisters kai whatever god did to me may he do it to you truly speaking I say it with all humility my life is a free life I am I will be I will be lying if I tell you it was all my effort I think there is something about the sovereign power of God maybe it's an election of grace he did it but the moment hold my hands David down another person come and make a come these are the luggages we carry one other person the ladies i don't know how you are going to hold me find a way of holding come 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 we're acting something here hold anybody come and hold my hand here come can they hold you she's afraid of holding me she wants to hold david down now watch this this is a prayer warrior i'm showing you your spirit man you are a prayer warrior you are a fasting giant you are a word addict but you are carrying these are the cares jesus is begging that you give him that we are refusing how old are you i'm 30 you mean it i thought you were 42 this is the lord because a broken a broken uh, what spirit can dry the physical bones and it will show on your face so this guy is carrying all this load do you think satan is so foolish to allow this load fall off you with the advantage he's getting do you know how satan ties them he doesn't use a rope he uses your heart that's what is there this is how to be spiritual you come to a point where you say lord i love you but these things are occupying my heart and lord i'm not irresponsible but then you have to become lord of my life genuinely i am too attached i can't sleep i sleep for one hour per day because i'm thinking about money a man can have nothing except it is given and you let go the issue of the job the devil will now deceive you and say you better be responsible if you don't think about it it won't come and he said no jesus i hand it over to you hallelujah this is the way of the cross you are getting free you too you are strange because you are now feeling lighter ah, now all of a sudden you could pray before you go to pray after five minutes you stop praying on your own and you are thinking but now you could stretch for one hour two hours you are becoming lighter and then all of a sudden this one is a lady hallelujah are we together this is a lady or, or a, a, a gentle he can mean anybody it doesn't have to be lady or a, a, whatever lord jesus i must make it happen my way and god is saying you will wear yourself to death lord age is not on my side is it that you are not seeing and god is saying i am lord of all if i don't give you anything it is vain to wake up in the morning and to sleep late in the night only to eat the bread of sorrow and he said lord i've been looking at this lady's picture i can't even pray and god says I will, if you think i'm going to talk to you about that lady you are joking you better talk to me leave this lady and say god i want to but this lady she has become an idol maybe the lady yes it's true that's the name it's called idolatry let's call it what it is she has become an idol not because she's bad are you getting what i'm saying now but because she's doing something to your heart and it's affecting your relationship with god so god is going to say lay it down lay it down does not mean leave her lay it down means be willing to leave her hi and you say oh god no now how can i leave this guy this is my 11th relationship and while you are talking all that nonsense god doesn't say anything he allows you then you now cry cry one night lie down roll and let it go your spiritual life you notice that the moment you surrender something lives in you the more you die you can trace that this came alive because of this that went down you see that love not the world love not the world this one is ministry no i must shine my colleagues started ministry before me and i mean i must do ministry this, this is a lot of especially some of us that have the grace of god upon our lives no i must start the prayer group or the church or the koinonia or whatever it is and god says look calm down 
for three months you are not holding any meetings oh god my whole reputation was on this small fellowship now you're asking me to close it so that they won't respect me again god said that's exactly what i was trying to show you it was never about the prayer meeting it was about you trying to use spirituality to build an ambition so lay it down you lay it down and then your encounters that stop resumes never will it resume because you are you are passionate about hearing something so that when they gather you say okay ladies and gentlemen i just came back from the throne and god said you won't use me like that is god speaking to us by the time you lay these things down let me show you the moment you focus on christ all of you come closer i'm focusing on christ look at what is happening physically are you seeing this my focus is on him and i turn back and find out so the goal was never to take them away from me the goal was to be the epicenter of my life now watch this whereas before i was the maintainer of them now he's the maintainer so anytime he says give the car after all lord is it not by your mercy it came take it not oh god this voice if it's you let my window share all this all these these things we do are proofs of carnality i was sharing with the leaders somebody called me to confirm whether it was god that spoke to him to send fifty thousand to somebody and i asked him i said if that god told you somebody is supposed to send money to you will you ask to confirm and say lord is it you it's carnality it's the same thing we are saying from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center it's all about you yes it's all about you from my heart to the heavens jesus be the center prosper financially because of their attachment to money their attachment obsession obsession if they are passing and they smell money they turn their direction and God says no way it doesn't work that way the proof that you are not attached to anything is your willingness to let it go the genuineness anything you cannot let go you are attached to it yes sir yes sir Oh, I'm so blessed hearing this message myself. Are we together? I am shocked at how many of us are shortchanging the power of God in our lives through our attachment to things. How about pastors attached to things, titles, attached to all of them? <laughs> Love not the world. This is how to be spiritual. You are giving yourself space to host his glory. Lord, I thank you. I'm trusting you to get married. And Lord says, all right, I will direct you. Say, no, Lord, this is, this is the lady. This is the guy I must marry. If you are the one, it must be this. And God says, that's not the way it works. Thy will be done. It is for your glory. Your thoughts are higher than my thoughts. Your ways are higher than my ways. I give you all the praise. That's a spiritual man. Lord, this is the business I want to do. I thank you. I have passion for it. But Lord, I am totally submitted to your will. That which you want is what I will do. Hmm. That's the language of spiritual. You see what God is doing in this ministry? It is because it is not my ministry. If it's my ministry, I would have been far older than I look now. Think how you think how I'll have to beg you and say, please don't be angry. Pastor Femi, come next Sunday. No. Please, if you're a pastor and you are giving yourself that headache, please come to the fountain where great men can rest. There is a Sabbath where he takes over your life, your ministry, and all that concerns you. A man can receive nothing except it is given to him. 
burn this into your spirit you cannot have naira and kobo except the majesty opens the heavens over you you cannot have any idea until he gives to you you can invent your ways of doing things and weep and suffer and struggle that's why we don't give you count offering and count five naira you add puff puff one thousand took another drink one thousand or wine are we together now and then you come before god and squeeze ten naira and you are smiling now ah, usher wait and god is looking at your heart look what jesus did in the church he came and stood and saw what people were giving it was a reflection of their attachment it wasn't the money he saw a woman who had all do you know why jesus was touched because she really didn't know who he was if she had known him it would be hypocrisy because he was there she just came that means she was doing it unsupervised it was what she would do whoever this god is of the hebrews i love him and i lay down everything love not the world this is the problem of many people's destinies attachment attachment to money god gave you a car all of a sudden you carry that car and put it in your heart the garage is not enough for it how can you have a garage for a car not and no altar for god is is carnality we build our homes with garages for five cars and then you meet with god inside the toilet you, you see our value when you go to ease yourself that's why you say oh lord i'm alone with you and god says you are not serious no you provide a cupboard where you keep your document your certificate because your paycheck is there and then where do you keep him he's not in your heart he's not even around far be it from me to create a shrine to keep any other thing when i've not made sure he says david said i'm sitting here in a palace and lord i know you sit in the heavens but i've not built you a house and god said ah you would have built but you've shed so much blood however it was good that it was in your heart or you gather the materials together and let your son be the one to build that temple all i want is for you for you to be glorified for you to be lifted all i want is for you, for you to be glorified, for you to be lifted. Luke chapter 15. Let me show you something in the story of the prodigal son. Luke chapter 15. Please give us verse 11. I found out that both the elder brother and the younger brother did the same thing. The story of the prodigal son. For many years we have harassed the younger brother and left the elder brother all of them did different versions of the same thing follow me verse 11 and he said a certain man had two sons how many sons two sons next verse and the younger of them said to his father give me a portion of goods that falleth to me and he divided unto them now watch this do you know that the house was all about his father but the children had access but then the child was angry because it was not in his name that's selfishness self-centeredness wants it in your name so that somebody was healed in koinonia no i'm not happy let it be that apostle joshua selman was the one who god used so i'm not i'm more concerned about my name being touched to the miracle than it is the god of heaven that touched the person that's self are you seeing that now yes the younger son had everything but every time he saw his father he had to wait on his father daddy i want something and the father was okay just a few minutes i said no no i want something so that i will it will be in my name and said daddy i'm tired of depending on you ah, that's what christians do lord i'm tired of waiting on you for this power give me this thing so that i can do it anyhow i want on stage why must i wait for you and worship before you come don't you know that is falling my hand after clapping for me and giving me water i come and stand on the stage and i say lord you have to come whereas people on my is my t-shirt they are wearing with my face not your face so lord give me this power so that i can operate it independent of you 
prodigal son. He didn't want it. He wanted it in his name, meaning his control. The father said, all right, everyone that asks it, receive it. Now watch this. He says, and not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he took on his journey. Are you seeing? He did not want submission. Uh -uh. A self-centered life wants to be the Lord of yourself the custodian of your decisions to hell with any and everybody i am the lord of myself it's a terrible way of living it says and he did what wasted wasted his substance with riotous living party and all of that because he felt by showing his friends money they will respect him you see that and so he showed all of that and what happened we're reading and when he had spent all there arose a mighty famine in the land and he began to be in want where did limitation enter his life when he left there was abundance and there was supply could it be that your limitation in every area is a reflection that you are dissociating yourself from the authority of the father building an empire for yourself and now you are having to foot your bills by yourself 15 and he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country and sent him into the fields to feed swine brothers and sisters once in royalty having abundance to the point that even the servants were considered privileged people now because he declared that he did not want his father to be the regulator of his life and his activities he wanted to regulate everything by himself this was his destiny and he would fain have filled his belly with this horse that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him 17 and when he came to himself you can be sure that he came to his mind he said how many hired servants of my father have bread enough to eat and spare and i perish with hunger 18 i will arise and go to my father that's what someone needs to do this night and i will say father i have sinned against heaven and before thee 19 i am no more worthy to be called your son make me as one of your servants verse 20 hallelujah and he arose and came to his father but when he was yet a great way off listen his father saw him and had what compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him keep reading and the son said to him father i have sinned against thee and in thy sight i am no more worthy to be called thy son 22 but the father said to his servants bring forth the best robe now hold on the elder brother is about to come now so watch carefully bring forth the best robe and put it on him and put a ring on his hand and shoes on his feet 23 and bring hither the fatted calf and kill and let us eat and be merry why for my son was dead and now is alive to be separated from the authority of god is death to be carnally minded is death you see there but to be spiritually minded is life and with it peace and he was lost and is found and they began to be merry scene two now the elder son was in the field and he came and drew nigh to the house and had music and dancing the guy will always say he's innocent let's examine him now and he called on one of the servants and asked what these things meant 27 and they said unto him thy brother is come and thy father had killed the fatted calf because he had received him safe and sound and he was help me and would not go in therefore his father came out what if, whoever that father is must be a good father the father left the party and came out and met him and entreated him 29 and he answered now watch this you see this this is what the father the boy said lo many years do i serve thee neither transgress i at any of thy commandment and yet thou never gavest me so two of them wanted ownership it's just that one had it secretly in his heart and another verbalized and said give me two of them had the same lust it's just that one was vocal enough to manifest it whereas and was he not eating in the house 
was it not celebration that was going on was he not a calf that was but he wanted he said let me go and make merry with my friends is it not the same thing the younger brother was doing two of them two of them were expressions of the same thing one was quiet just like you and the other one is vocal like the sinner roaming around but the truth is that it's still the same thing jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher Jesus you be lifted higher higher be lifted higher listen so there can be an outspoken brother who is carnal and wants everything it must be car it must be money it must be reputation and you are the quiet brother you are the elder brother you like it you like the honor you like the prestige are we together you like and you can kill for it is just that you are not that courageous so we will be deceived into thinking you are the nice person and the other one who is vocal but the word of god declares to us that two of them need the attention of their father their father attended to the younger one and he still had to come and attend to the elder one because two of them had the same problem christ-centeredness maybe it's because you have not had a big ministry that's why we have not seen the full potential of what is in your heart it may not be that you are humble maybe it's because joshua selman has not owned a private jet that's why you think he's a humble brother so god draws me down say mr man stop looking at jet look at my face so that let's flog this out before jet kills you and takes away there are people who would throw God out of the plane and remain there alone. Tonight is a call. You want to experience power? You want to experience miracles? You must come to a point in your life. Brothers and sisters, you can stand in front of your Jeep like this and say, what a beautiful car. And turn and say, Lord, truly, if you make demand of this, I will give you. And you are not just doing church language. Is from your heart. Yes. It's from your heart. That way, when God gives you the gift of a wife, you will not beat her and say, I must beat you. That's how we are in our family. When we are angry, we beat, we ask for forgiveness later on. That attitude is because you do not know that a man cannot have anything except it is given to him. When God gives you children, you will not allow them to become lawless and say no it's westernization because you will know that everything God gives you he demands that you act as though it's his own God never gives us ownership owners are rebels in this kingdom we are stewards of everything his resources mysteries whatever it is it belongs to him it only passes through me so brother you want to become a multi-millionaire do you have the grace to give and give and keep giving and support the work of the lord and support lives if it's not in your presence if it's not by your hand If it's not by your spirit, please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hand. Spirit, don't let me have everything I need is in you. Question Does your wardrobe belong to him? Does your bank account belong to him? Does your anointing know you fasted for it to come, but does it belong to him now? 
does your wife belong to him does your husband belong to him does whoever you are in a relationship with does it belong to him do your children belong to you or they are his property you are only a steward over them does your business belong to you does your church does koinonia belong to him or is joshua selman's property is his um ladder of greatness ah far be it from me too young for that kind of stress Don't let me have it. Let everything I have be from you. Please don't let me have it. For everything I need is in you. Listen, this is the level where you will see dimensions of power beyond your wildest imagination someone will sit down on your bed and stand up and all of a sudden the fibroid is gone it was so unconscious there is an effulgence of glory that you carry and walk with you broke is a joke God will shake people everywhere to make sure he brings resources for you the things that people do for me never never stop amazing me I thank God for the things that God does. But I am so... Sometimes I just look and I say, Lord, Kai. Someone was going to bless me a few days ago. And it was quite a very large amount. And the person just said, oh, please send me your account number. And I just, as I was ending the call, the Spirit of God was speaking to me about a family that that money was for. You know why God can speak to me like that? Because my life, the account and the favor is his own. I was so happy when he said it. Not just as a law for abundance. It's with all pleasure. My one desire is that you be praised. That you be praised. That you be praised. You're my one desire. That you be praised, that you be praised, that you be praised. Hear the word of the Lord tonight. Please come unto me. Come unto me. All ye that labor, labor, profitless labor, labor that you have carried your heart and put inside. <clears throat> there is a realm of rest a man can enter the rest of God it's not irresponsibility everybody knows he's the doer of the miracles he's the opener of the door he's the lifter of men you have separated your ego from these things if it happens well for you glory be to God if it does not happen well to you Lord be praised if the child comes Lord I thank you for the testimony if the child does not come Lord while I wait I still love you that's one who is Christ-centered. Listen, that's a spiritual man. That's a spiritual man. God is speaking to us. We need to be careful. Our lusts and our appetites are leading us through roads of destruction. We need to come back and say, Lord, I hand everything over to you. People are marrying wrongly because of self, flesh. The lady must be this beautiful figure eight. The guy must be this, a millionaire must be this. And people keep jam-packing rubbish and trouble into their lives. How about people who don't even... Gone are the days, this issue of hearing God. People have eroded it. You just get up and say, I want to go to Abel Kuta because there's green pastures there. How about brothers and sisters? Let's respect and fear God. There were times where people never took any step until they heard from God. They would rather be considered failures. We've thrown all that away because of our ego. Let them not say, I'm a graduate and I am not working. If it's not in your presence, if it's not by your hands, 
it's not by your spirit Please don't let me For everything I need is in you Listen, we're about to pray Think for one moment The causes of your worry this morning Think of the reason why you woke up by 2 a.m. in the morning all that worry trace it down it is self it is self because he gives his beloved sleep you rejected it because you are i don't mean waking up to plan your life there are many they just wake up and say life what a terrible life how can this ministry grow how can this ministry grow Oh Lord, do this, this. How can this ministry grow? And God said, you have been talking about ministry for one week. You have not talked about me. You forgot about me and you have been drumming. Lord, my church must grow. And God says, how about me? Will I grow in your heart? Say, God, leave the show of you. My church must grow. Prophecy came that is my year of this and that. Lord, why is it that I go for meetings and nothing happens? I love you, I fast, but I stand at the end of the meeting, I'm ashamed. And God says, when you die to me and it no longer becomes about you and your reputation, then you will see the glory of the Lord. This is my daily prayer. I'm, I'm praying that God will infect you with that hunger tonight. Please hear me. God is speaking to us. I want you to take, I'm not preaching. I'm talking from the depth of my heart, transferring something from me to you. We need to repent of self-centeredness and let Jesus Christ be the epicenter of our lives. May God forgive me if I'm lying, but there is nothing I know in my life today that I cannot give God. I ask for forgiveness if I'm telling a lie. But there is nothing I know. Especially things. Things. I can't be that stupid. No. Some of you are about fighting with somebody because of 100 naira change. God spoke to you since last month. Leave it. Say, no way. I fight for my right. Lord, this is how I left it the other time. They will take me for granted and God is talking to you. Oh, the tailor was supposed to correct this. You must correct it and I won't pay you anything. I will show you that I'm educated. And God said, you see this? The foundation is flesh. Listen, blessed are the peacemakers. Have you heard that scripture? Do you know who a peacemaker is? It says seek peace. And if you don't find it, pursue it. Look for it by any means. For everything I need is in you. We surround our lives with needless worries as a proof that God can no longer provide. Ha! I will never forget during our crusade, one of, I think it was 2006, a Jimmy had a laptop. It was the only one that had, was it? No, it wasn't a laptop, it was a computer. He was the only one who had a computer at that time. And we we're trying to raise money for the crusade. And that's how this guy. I think it was, he just put a notice in the uh, hostel there, Suleiman. Computer for sale. I was so touched. I don't know how many of them he has now. He will get it and buy it and buy it and buy the factory. That's what happens when you're hard. Stop admiring people that the gates of heaven are open over. Find out what they did for God to trust them this much. Don't say you are lucky. It's because your father is this. My father is a lie. God supervises our hearts. I've taught it here in Koinonia, but let me say it. When God is closing a door over somebody, don't open it. Don't open it out of sympathy. There are people that I've wanted to help with all my heart and God has stopped me again and again. There is a dealing God is rotting in their life. Don't interrupt the dealing of God. Are we together? There are pastors for many years they love God but their church will not grow. They are serving God and sometimes you can pity them and say look just invite them. Let me come and speak over your meeting and mobilize people for you. And God says you are doing the mistake that Achan did. Well, um, not, not Uzzah. You are doing Uzzah's mistake. You want to help God to hold the ark and you find that it will not only strike you, it will strike others associated with you. A 
our hearts must be given to him ladies please look at me sisters let's hand over our hearts to him and end this lust for things clothes shoe they are wonderful god will give you more than your wildest imagination brothers let's drop this big manism and appetite for titles and a proof to show i am rich so that all and sundry will respect you is all nonsense if you are great you are great honor is a mantle if you don't have it you don't have it. it's as simple as that tonight is a night of thorough repentance we are going to cry before god and confess the idolatry the sin the carnality of idolatry to say lord i've carried this thing on my head like a do or die affair and it's almost killing me i hand it over there is peace in handing over your life to god there is peace in handing over your children to god there is peace in handing over your job hand over the difficult boss don't try to go and be looking for a godfather and the godfather say 50 50 agreed and you are in trouble now allow god who would do it 100 zero he will give you bless you we commit ourselves into things and projects God has no business in because we cannot let him have his way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. Have your way, Lord. Have your way. so much of my testimonies because I want people to focus on Jesus and the things that I'm teaching we came back from Lagos last week and after the meeting I was counseling people and I came out to just you know see the pastors and, and then a gentleman was standing there and he was telling me that sir I just wanted to tell you that I brought a car here for you and then I'm looking and say, my God, what is all this? I, 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 because when I hear those kind of things, I feel guilty. It's as if I'm even bullying them. I just, just talk to this. Please talk to the protocol people and let the church, whatever they want to do with it there. And I came back, and I think the day before yesterday or so, they still called the protocol, the church, and said, somebody has given a apostle a cow. How do we convey it and bring it there? It is this car that someone has left God for. Father, this car must come. This is already, um, what month are we in now? February, car, it must come and God is saying, Abba, is this how small I am to you? I want to show you something, open to the book of Matthew, Matthew chapter 1, God I've been crying, I've been saying, can God is saying look, look how you are making a mess of yourself when you love God and fear God please hear me, he would take the prayer request of somebody it's not because I'm a man of God, oh, go and ask him what I'm doing, don't just say you are lucky, there's no luck in this thing, you walk it out with fear and trembling and passion and fire have your way have your way we are fighting too many battles in our lives these battles are not even there they were created by our lost sister let God bring a husband for you please rest rest and watch what God can do for you in two weeks 10 years of labor and manipulation can end in two weeks of saying Lord I hand it over to you I vow that I'm going to be a blessing to whichever man you bring and while I wait for him I will love you I will serve your house and I will prepare for the blessing God says that's it that's all I'm looking for and all of a sudden the brother will not be able to sleep again he will see clearly there's no haze there's no confusion straight this is your wife stand up and go and see her parents instead of walking it out by yourself and sweating around what of brothers I must do this if I can call this one and then he calls this one for me and then I just connect with Pastor Alpha if I can beg a Jimmy and then beg a Benga and then beg this and that I, if I put them from I think 3 plus 3 will be 6 3 plus 3 will be not be 6 forever because there are demons there are wicked forces that will keep minusing one minusing different things and the equation never adds up but when you add it over to God 1 plus 1 can be 6 one plus one is anything God says the answer is. If God says it's one million, that's it. Mathematics say one plus one must be two. God says I create. 
I don't see under. No, no, no. Whatever I want, the earth is the Lord's. So God can say your third class plus your mother's firewood job equal to an estate. This is God. This is God. Whereas your flesh can say NMPC plus an auxiliary uncle in the bank can still equal to pain and suffering. We are going to pray. Tonight, the Lord is bringing us to the place of rest. The spirit life demands that our desires, listen, our appetites, our ambitions, our aspirations come under submission to his will. This is all God is asking. I was so blessed by Mr. Job's testimony and the wife. Did you hear what they said? They had been trusting God for a baby boy. Are you seeing that? But notice the progression of the way he shared the testimony. The first thing he said was his spiritual life and the way God put his life in order. And then without any effort as it were, a child came. Could it be that your prayer request, your heart is too full for your prayer request to be given to you? When you empty it and keep Christ alone, then he begins to bring every and anything. We are going to sing Take All of Me. Please take it high for me. Don't just sing it as a special number. I want you to sing it from your heart. Some of you, as you are singing it, God is going to be dealing with you and talking with you. Take all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Say, take all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Use all of me, use all of me, all of me, Lord, you have my everything. Take all of me, take all of me. I release my everything. You have my everything. Say all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Say all of me, all of me, all of me, Lord. You have my everything. Use all of me. Take all that sits in my heart attempting to take your place lift your voice and cry take it away except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain except the Lord builds a house they labor in vain Take it away. Let that circumcision in the spirit. Let that circumcision over money. Let that circumcision over power. That circumcision over titles. Let it happen, oh God. Purge me. Purge me. Purge my heart. Remove 
everything every lost that I'm so attached to every lost that I'm so attached to that will not allow me enthrone you a Christ-centered life a life where everything about you aside from God nothing is a do or die affair Christ Lord and throw hallelujah prayer point number two mention everything you think is greatness in your life and say you come under the lordship of Jesus mention it whatever God has done and given you mention it by name and bring it under the lordship of Jesus the marriage you gave me I bring it under the lordship of Jesus the children you have given me they are taught of the Lord and great is their peace I rededicate them a handover ceremony the job you gave me I hand it over to you the relationship you gave me I hand it over to you if you brought it you are the one who can maintain it the burden is killing me pray the burden is destroying me Lord you are the one who gave me the prayer group the church the business I'm tired of struggling by my strength bring me rest bring me rest the rest that only you can bring it all belongs to you your life like a charm favor open doors i tell you the bible says behold i and the children whom who gave you who gave you is god that gives increase i and the children the lord had given me are for signs 
and for wonders in Zaria, in Nigeria, in Israel. But where do the signs and wonders come from? From the Lord of hosts. I and the children that God has given me are for signs and for wonders in Israel from the Lord of hosts. We are going to pray. You are connected to this vision. You are part of this ministry. Pray and say, Lord, not only will my life produce signs and wonders, I will be an epistle of that possibility. Lift your voice and pray. I declare, pray that I and the children that the Lord has given me, we are for signs and for wonders, for signs, financial signs and wonders, supernatural signs and wonders, dimensions of revelations, dimensions of encounters, dimensions of increase, dimensions of influence, dimensions of prayer grace, access to the mysteries of the kingdom. Spiritual men, kingdom-minded people, Hallelujah. Can I add one last prayer point for us? I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I make a vow before you that whatever you bring to pass through my hand or my life is already rededicated for your glory. Pray that prayer and watch my God surprise you. Pray that prayer and God will give you in one day what your salary cannot give you in one year. Pray that prayer and God will give you houses you did not build. Dimensions of revelations you were not fasting for. Pray. Lord, I rededicate everything. My intellect, the anointing, my home, my wealth, the influence. Please pray. Let every weakness, spiritual weakness, weakness in prayer, weakness in word study, Hali, Hali, Hariaka, Hali, Bendekata, Branduskia, You are in the place of strength. Strength is being imparted in your inner man. In the name of Jesus Christ. You see, listen to me. I pray that you will learn the value of the presence of Jesus. That he is more than the leader of a denomination. He is more than a man of God's message. He is more than a project called ministry. You have to understand this. He is more than what a man of God who founded a ministry comes to stand to teach or talk about 
Jesus Christ is not an archangel. Jesus Christ is not a cherub. No. God is not a man. He only became a man. If he's a man, he must worship who created him. I have been in awe of the wonder, walking power, and the presence of Jesus. You see, when you give him your attention, he will give you everything that men clamor for. I can tell you this. The secret to speed is to wait. When you learn to wait, you will look foolish while you wait. But when his jealousy is done upon your life, your life will move at a frequency that will first marvel you the benefactor of that grace. Five minutes in his presence can be equivalent to years of looking for contract. Listen to me. Ten minutes in his presence. We have allowed the devil lie to us that the presence of God is distracting. Just hurry up and let's face the day. Moses said, do not let us depart from here if your presence. What else are we saying? What else are we teaching? I have learned the value of his presence. The presence of Jesus. The presence of the Holy Spirit. Who but him can gather such a people as this? Does a man have that ability? Do you have that intelligence? Based on what do you have the ability to gather over 10 to 15,000 people? Who do you think you are? But the presence. If he can bring men, can't he bring resources? If he can bring men, can't he bring connectors? If he can bring men, can't he bring wealth? If he can bring men, can't he open doors? I'm coming back to the heart of worship When it's all about you It's all about you, Jesus I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I've made it. When it's all about you it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah. So when sickness comes, when failure comes, there is something it is doing that you must resist and reject because the father purchased you and something of inferior value is trying to buy you back the only thing that can buy you back is what is greater than jesus if you can find something more precious than his blood then it is worth buying you back I'm seeing people running in the spirit. Now these things, these are supernatural things. Literally, I don't know why God does these things sometimes, but I believe that is a grace that is coming to move people into the next levels. Please, regardless the overflows, regardless wherever, I, I believe that that grace, people will literally begin to run. Some of them run out by the spirit. The Lord by it is destroying delays of all kinds and I want you to be sensitive just help them whether you are an usher or not since I've seen it let me just declare it in the name of Jesus father those who must drink of this grace that makes for speed are covered up over their life over their destiny everything holding you back everything holding you down such an anointing is coming upon them. In the name of Jesus the Christ of God.
the same way the hand of the lord came upon elijah he ran and overtook the chariots of ahab down to jezreel i speak speed over your life supernatural speed help them please speed over your destiny in the name of jesus christ speed over your life within a short time you will see the grace of god picking you lifting you bringing you honor i decree and declare help them please in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ and hear me everything every force that keeps you down in the name that is above all names i declare it must let you go now please be seated matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 matthew chapter 28 just to consider a lesson tonight and then we pray in the end of the sabbath the bible says as it began to dawn towards the first day of the week came mary magdalene and the other mary to see the sepulchre and behold there was a great earthquake for the angel of the lord now watch this is painting for us the sin of the resurrection the angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone from the door and sat upon it. His countenance was like lightning and his raiment white as snow. And for fear of him, the keepers did shake and became as dead men. And the angel answered and said unto the women, fear not. For I know that ye seek Jesus which was crucified. He is not here. He is risen as he said. Come, see the place where the Lord lay. And go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead. And behold, he goeth before you into Galilee. There you shall see him. Lo, I have told you. Verse 8 says, And they departed quickly from the sepulchre with fear and great joy and did run to bring his disciples word and as they went to tell his disciples behold jesus met them saying all hail and they came and held him by the feet and worshiped him and jesus said unto them be not afraid go tell my brethren that they should go into galilee and there they shall see me now when they were going behold some of the watch came into the city and showed unto the chief priest all the things that were done take note now and when they were assembled with the elders and had taken counsel they gave large money unto the soldiers why saying say ye his disciples came by night and stole him away while he slept and if this come to the governor's ear we will persuade him and secure you so they took the money and did as they were taught and this saying is commonly reported among the jews unto this day please look up the bible says among the many things that satan could not stand was the resurrection not just the cross you know many times when we teach about the matters of redemption it looks like all that we stop at is the cross and whilst the cross is a very important component of redemption it does not stop at the cross if Jesus stopped at the cross that would be fatal for us are we together there is nothing new about a man dying for people founders have died for people parents have died for their children but the nature of the death of jesus required resurrection to truly prove the father's love now listen very carefully the bible says when jesus resurrected from the dead it was such a threat to the gates of hell that they came together and took counsel and said you know what we will give you money money was introduced are you seeing that money has always played a role to fight the resurrection 
he took money they brought money and they said this is what will happen we will use our influence and secure you just say the disciples came and stole him we may not do anything about the fact that he walked upon the earth and healed the sick we may not do anything about the fact that there was a real cross at Golgotha but that resurrection part because there were already prophecies that if it's true that he rose from the dead then it will give the basis for our justification it was not his death that justified us let me give you a little story the entire discourse of redemption started from what we call the lord's supper are we together now the bible lets us know that jesus was with 12 of the disciples and 12 is the prophetic number of government government and so that was the whole world in covenant coming into one man when he took of the bread and the cup and gave it to them in theology we call it the doctrine of interpenetration is the mystery by which two entities become one is the same principle we use in marriage when a man and a woman become joined even though they are separate personalities the bible says they have become one are we together now so if jesus were to die for the sins of the world there had to be a technology to transfer the whole world into him are we together now and that happened the basis for that connection was the lord's supper whilst they ate the bread that jesus said he was they took of the wine now he was qualified to take on the entire sin of the whole world the next sin would be gethsemane the bible says when he got to gethsemane he cried do you know why he cried he did not cry because he was afraid of death no he had been speaking about his death time and again i will die and come back to life he cried because something was happening in gethsemane the bible says he who knew no sin became sin that was what was happening there he was crying because until then mortality would not walk in him remember there was a time he walked through the crowd even though he was born of a woman he was fathered by the spirit joseph was only a caretaker the holy ghost played the fatherly role of jesus if jesus died and did not resurrect his body would still be fresh on the ground he could not be corrupted because it was not the seed of a mortal man are we together now now listen carefully so when jesus was at gethsemane the bible says he cried for the first time he tasted the pain of humanity in its full strength and he even said father if it is possible you are the god of all wisdom there is still a system you can route without my going through this he said nevertheless not my will but your will be done now watch this you have to back up and go to genesis 3 to understand what man lost so that you will understand what jesus regained when man fell many things happened number one he lost the holy spirit the holy spirit is the life of god he's not the career he's the very life of god are we together now number two man lost righteousness the very nature of God, the nature that gives you access to the riches that are in God. Men like E.W. Kenyon would define righteousness as the ability to stand in the Father's presence without a sense of guilt, condemnation, and inferiority. It's a very powerful definition. But it's not just a consciousness. It is the nature of God at work. He lost that. Number three, man lost dominion understand what man lost sovereign control how did man lose dominion he lost dominion by transferring responsibility there is a law in this kingdom that every time you don't take responsibility you transfer your authority because responsibility and authority goes together so when god came to adam and said adam where are you what is this that you have done adam transferred the responsibility to his wife you notice god did not talk to adam again he said all right you have transferred do you know if the woman kept quiet immediately she will become the head of the man when god came he met the person he gave sovereign authority as head when satan came satan did not meet adam he came through eve if eve recognized authority she would have
have referred Satan to Adam. But she took loss into her hands and she was deceived. When she ate of the fruit, nothing happened. When she gave the man and he ate, suddenly things began to change. Because the dominion was given to him as head over his wife. Listen carefully. I'm explaining the realities of redemption so that we will know what resurrection brought. Help that lady. Praise the name of the Lord. So he lost dominion. Adam, he complained and blamed the woman. He transferred both responsibility and authority. Woman, what is this that you have done? She said the serpent. She transferred responsibility and authority. Serpent, what have you done? He didn't blame anybody. That's how he became the God of this world. He silenced. I own up to it that I'm a deceiver, Satan. That's why when Jesus Christ was gaining it back, he kept quiet with Pontius Pilate. Won't you talk? And he kept quiet. His silence was not weakness. It was a system of reclaiming back that dominion. There is a lesson here you need to learn. Every time you transfer responsibility, you also transfer dominion. Responsibility and dominion work together. Peripasu. You do not have respons dominion and then without responsibility. So for those who know their right in Christ, you must also know your responsibility in Christ. Are we blessed? So man lost the Holy Spirit. Man lost righteousness. You have to understand this. And man lost authority over creation. That key that God gave man. There was a throne that represented Adam's dominion in the realm of the spirit. When God looked, he could not see Adam seated there again. That was why he said, where are you? Adam was roaming around in the garden. But spiritually, my God, this is also a lesson. That means when God calls you, when God anoints you, there is a real throne in the realm of the spirit that signifies your ranking and your power. Recognized by God, recognized by devils. Are we together now? And from that time, there was a statement that was made. The seed of the woman shall bruise the head of the serpent. And Satan began to search for everybody that looked like the seed. When Eve gave birth to Cain, Satan thought Cain was the seed. So he came to Cain. He, until man came, there was no possibility of spreading through reproduction. Reproduction was a concept Satan had never seen. It was only creation. It was Adam's dispensation that started the idea of spreading through reproduction. Satan did not know what God built in a woman. So he began to study and he saw a woman's stomach protruding. Then she gives birth to a child and Satan is saying, wait, wait a minute, something is going on here. And he thought she could only give birth once. So he came to Cain. And when he found out that a woman could give birth indefinitely, he said there is problem that means this woman has the power together with her husband to multiply bodies that can host and carry the glory of God Satan began to search for that seed everybody Satan ever attacked in scripture was in hope that he was the seed when Moses was born he thought that he was the seed and he made children die because of him every time there was a battle for over Israel. It was because he had heard. The moment God entered a covenant with Abraham, Satan knew that the seed is within this vicinity. It has to be among the Jews. From that day, the Jews got into trouble. The lesson here is that Satan does not attack for nothing. Whether you are aware of what is on you or not, Satan studies people and handpicks them carefully. There are people who are not worth his attack. No, he will see you and pass you. Even if you call him, he will greet you focusing on others that he's looking for. Listen to what I'm telling you. Satan does not attack men. He's attacking the word of prophecy that is able to empower those men to be part of kingdom come. Samson, prophet Samuel, Elijah, all through. When 
John the Baptist came in the spirit and the power of Elijah notice what the spirit of the Antichrist was the question he was asking through the Pharisees are you the one he wanted to know the one so he would kill him and John kept confusing them he said I am the voice of one crying then what is this are you the one or not and then listen carefully the Bible lets us know that after 18 years of rigorous training from age 12 we do not hear about Jesus again the next time we hear about him he's 30 years old and he comes to be baptized baptism you see John was not a Baptist John was a prophet baptism was among many things a strategy that was invented for him to identify that one so every time he would pour water on people, he would look up. He would say, you can go. Pour water on people, look up. He would say, you can go. Pour water on people, you can go. Suddenly, he comes out and looks at this one and says, Behold the lamb that was slain. He says, I am not worthy to untie the latchet of your shoes. And then Jesus said, Suffer it to be so that scripture will be fulfilled. He dips him in water. When he brings him out, your Bible says, and the heavens open. And God said, all right, creation, there's no hiding again. This is that beloved son, the one you have been looking for. Notice, from that day, Satan did not have any business with anyone again. Jesus became the object of attack. He began to pursue everything Jesus. The wisdom of the father was being played so when jesus gave himself up at gethsemane there was something he was doing that satan did not understand the bible calls this mystery the hidden wisdom of god that if the princes knew if satan knew that his escorting jesus to the cross was a disaster to him he will make sure jesus did not die here's the mystery satan did not understand that the burden of the whole world can come into one person it was not part of remember even though originally he was the light bearer he had an assignment as the custodian of the mysteries of god but it was not everything about god he had it was on the excellency of the light he had that he thought he could run a parallel government so there were other aspects of god he did not know the whole world was in christ he had now become the second Adam in experience. Now, there are lots of parallels. I wish I had time. I would have worked a few things. Realize something, number one. Every time Satan wants to attack Adam, he goes to Eve. Satan today is still attempting to spite God. And the person he attacks is his bride, the church. He is still attacking that Eve again. And if we make the mistake the first Eve made, remember the first Eve did not acknowledge authority. That was a mistake. So the second Eve must be like Esther. That was a mystery of the book of Esther. The Vashti made a mistake. She forgot that she was only queen because she married the king. When Esther wanted to make the whole mistake, he had Mordecai, who is the type of the Holy Spirit, advising her and say, Be careful. You are about to make a mistake that will cost you your position. Do not make the mistake of the second Eve. The first Eve. She did not refer Satan to the authority that was above her. Now the bride of Christ as the second Eve. He comes to us again. He comes to propose to you. And you refer him to the authority that you are under. The Bible says submit unto God then on the basis of your submission resist the devil you don't resist him by your own authority it is on the strength of your submission you resist the devil and he will flee are we together so jesus is in gethsemane follow me please and he prayed and prayed and prayed when he was done what we call the exchange began to happen that means everything that happened from that time was in exchange my goodness my goodness the first thing that happened to him was the mockery that he went through everything that he went through was in exchange for what would now become our testimony they mocked him and everything he went through 
then they put a crown of thorn on his head they didn't know what they were doing it was in exchange for the restoration of the dominion that man lost because the symbol of a king's dominion is his crown and his scepter without a crown and scepter there is no royalty so Jesus was receiving that crown of thorn so that our dominion be restored in experience the Bible says they whipped him 40 stripes save one 39 stripes while they whipped him and he went through all of those things and they tore his flesh they did not understand that that body was being broken so that ours would be made whole it's an exchange then they carried this 33 year old man i hope you know he walked down the street of golgotha naked the covering you see in movies is just for social reasons he was a naked 33 year old man in the flesh when jesus was on his way to golgotha he was an object of pain and shame the father looked at him and yet for the love that he had for man he said jesus you have to go through this everybody mocked him while he went at a point he fell now watch this carefully he fell because he did not have the strength to continue he had lost blood when he fell down right there they called someone called simon of cyrene i don't have the time i would have taught you that that is africa the bible calls him the nigger a black man a black man was the only continent that identified with Jesus on his way to the cross he said I may not mean much they despised me but I can help you carry the cross that is the reason why in all honesty this is the continent that will stand to represent a true portrait of apostolic and prophetic Christianity the Bible says if we partook of his sufferings then we must also partake of the glory that follows this is a message for africa that rejected stone mm. when jesus was on his way to the cross every continent left him but africa said i will not run away from you i will go through the shame listen i hope you know that if jesus died without dying on the cross that would be a wasted death he had to die on the cross to be a cause not to die on the floor because there is a law that is written that is only on a tree when you die that you become a cause so if he died on the floor it would have still been a wasted project jesus was about to abort redemption but for man who came and said no i will not let this happen you may not have the energy but i will take that cross and when Jesus hung upon that cross, ladies and gentlemen, as he bled, as he cried, the father turned his face. The Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul and he shall be satisfied. All of this was done because of you and me. God was not looking for anything for himself. You have to understand this. And then jesus gave up the ghost the bible says when he died do you know what happened in hell there was jubilation beyond imagination satan could not believe it so life can die the author of life there was jubilation in hell the saints who were in abraham's bosom in hades were now confused what is happening here I thought there was prophecy that a time is coming redemption will come for us mm. let me give you a little drama of what happened in hell while Satan his celebration was short-lived all of a sudden a stranger steps into the place of the dead listen sit down sit down He went to hell without the Holy Ghost. He went to hell with the power that was originally given to man. In the strength of the second Adam. If he was assisted by the Holy Ghost, he would be unfair. He needed to go as man. And the Bible says, Paul, 
was given this revelation the cohorts of hell were on him Colossians chapter 2 you read 14 15 16 the Bible says the cohorts of hell were upon him forcing him to bow what is him bowing whoever you bow to you acknowledge their authority and since he came as the express image of God and while he was bowing the Bible says he shall see the travail of his soul do you know what that means one of the secrets to peace is justice without justice there will be no peace so the legal claims of justice had to be met and Jesus humiliated by those principalities and powers the moment there was a declaration satisfied the Bible says Jesus made a public show of them in hell all these things was happening in Hades dislodge all these demons and went to Lucifer himself good to see you bring the key that you gave Adam that key that he collected in the garden of Eden Revelation chapter 1 I am he that was dead but now is alive and I have the keys he did not collect the key on earth when he collected that key the next place he went to was to go and preach to the souls right there who were at Abraham's bosom it's in your Bible Apostle Peter told us that he preached the gospel to them because they could not be condemned they had not been given an opportunity to declare they died in faith and in hope when he preached to them all of them said we've been waiting for you and he said all right let's go and together as a team watch this Jesus did not resurrect alone it was only his grave you saw but the Bible says graves open imagine that event a similitude of the rapture graves began to open several people came out and listen the Bible says when the graves opened the people walked in Jerusalem they saw them and afterwards they couldn't go to heaven because he had to be the firstborn there was a high priestly ministry now he had finished his ministry as Savior but he was not yet Lord uh -uh. if listen to me the resurrection was the basis for his coronation the coronation is the basis for his being Lord now when he resurrected three things happened one he took his blood there is a heavenly tabernacle that is in the similitude of the one that was instructed for Moses to build are we together where atonement would happen and according to the Levitical law the age of the lamb determines the validity of the atonement so every year they had to renew now to end this once and for all the ageless lamb now drained his blood and took it to that tabernacle and poured it there once and for all the moment that happened he finished his high priestly ministry a coronation service like David saw the Lord said to my Lord sit down at my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool please understand this if you don't believe what I'm saying you are not a Christian a coronation service was held in heaven and in that coronation service a name was given to him Philippians chapter 2 from verse 5 down to 10 the Bible says wherefore on account of this humility and this sacrifice God had so highly exalted him verse 9 and given him a name a name that is above every other name above every other name and then the Bible says verse 10 that at the name of Jesus that means the name is not Jesus no I know you call Jesus you are just saying Jesus is the owner of that name that was given the name is not Jesus Jesus was a name he was given when he was born there are footballers today called Jesus that every knee should bow of things in heaven in earth and under the earth verse 11 it says and every tongue should confess that that Jesus 
who became the Christ when the Holy Ghost came upon him has now become Lord. That's the name. Notice the progression. Jesus, he became the Christ when the Holy Ghost came upon him. And now when he completed the sacrifice of redemption, the name is Lord. Lord means absolute owner. Psalm 24, the earth is the Whoever has that name is the owner of the earth. There are four things that are there. Give us Psalm 24 and verse 1. The earth is the Lord's. The fullness is the Lord's. The world and they that dwell therein, all of them, they belong to him. Now, when Jesus resurrected and that coronation service was done, he quickly came back to earth and they saw him. Isn't it amazing that the first person who saw the resurrected Christ was a woman? This is why women are gates in the realm of the spirit. The first person to see the resurrected Christ was a woman. He said, take that message, go and tell the disciples. And then Jesus made a very interesting statement. He said, all authority, by reason of resurrection, all authority has been given unto me. Matthew chapter 28 now. All authority has been given unto me. Verse 18, Matthew 28 and verse 18. All power, well, it says authority, power, but it, the word there is authority that is given unto me in heaven and in earth. 19. It says, Go therefore. Now, you, your celebration of Easter and the resurrection does not end with your awareness that you are justified. There is a mandate attached to it. Go therefore, please give it to us, verse 19, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. 20, the Bible says, teaching them to observe all these things I have commanded you. And whilst you do this, be assured that I am with you even to the end of the age. Do you know that without the resurrection, there is no Christianity? The resurrection proved the Lordship. It proved once again and finally so that Jesus Christ, give us Romans, I believe Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. Romans chapter 1 and verse 4. The Bible talks about the implication of the resurrection that he was declared to be the son of God with power according to the spirit of holiness by the resurrection from the dead. So he's resurrecting from the dead proof once and for all that this is the son of God. We would have the basis to argue. Prophets perform miracles. The disciples perform miracles. But now Jesus resurrected from the dead as the son of the living God, the new and living way, the mediator even of the new covenant. Romans chapter 4 and verse 25 tells us one of the benefits and the significance of the resurrection. The Bible says he was delivered for our offenses and he was raised again for our justification. Being justified means being declared not guilty. That the price and the penalty has been paid. Are we together? Yes. So today, we have confidence to stand in faith. Today, we have confidence to celebrate many things. One, that there is access to become the righteousness of God, access to become partakers of his life once again. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the Lord, the Bible says, being made a curse for us, for it is written, cursed is every man that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham, justification by faith, might come upon the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, to the end that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. That seal of redemption. Now we have access to the Holy Spirit. And then we have access to dominion. Sovereign control. Once again, we are not weak people under the situations, the, under the, the influence of situations and circumstances. Our dominion has been restored. This will remain theory until you believe this truth. What then 
is the gospel of salvation please look up what is the gospel of salvation because the bible says i am not ashamed of the gospel for it is the power of god unto salvation what then is the gospel of salvation listen carefully the gospel of salvation is the revelation of the father's love the revelation of the father's love demonstrated in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus christ the object of that sacrifice is the entire creation but man being his central focus he didn't die for man alone he died for the entire creation he reconciled creation to himself to the end that whoever believes his death his burial his resurrection and his ascension that that person should not perish but now become a partaker of his life so when we preach this glorious gospel we are not just recruiting members to a church listen there is a mandate that the whole world must know that he arose and that today he reigns and the bible says the same way it gives us a blessed hope that if jesus rose up from the dead and death did not have power over him that one day everybody who has died in christ let me bring a word of hope for you everybody you know who left you and died in christ there will be a resurrection where the dead in christ will arise the bible says and we who are alive will be caught up with him in the air there are seven pillars one day we'll discuss it maybe not tonight seven pillars of the christian faith seven of them the last of them is the blessed hope of the resurrection christianity is not complete if we do not believe in the resurrection both of jesus christ and in the fact that one day all together we will experience that glorious experience thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done thank you oh my father for giving us your son and leaving your spirit till your work on earth is done the gospel of salvation no matter what you preach no matter what rema you bring the foundation for the believers justification is that jesus christ the son of the living god left heaven came and walked upon the earth became seen died and was buried and according to the authority of scripture the bible says on the third day he rose again today he is seated in the right hand of the father that position of authority still continuing his priestly ministry making intercession for the saints what is the intercessory ministry like he says father i've been there i understand i've been there i know what it means for your temple to become a den of robbers i flogged people i understand listen to me jesus christ ascended to heaven with his physical body that is the proof that he's coming back if jesus christ went to heaven without his body he would still need another virgin he would still need to come back and grow he went to heaven as an adult so every condition for his return has been met the body for him to use when he's back is with him now this is what gives us confidence so when we say that jesus is coming we are not preaching a christian's gospel it is true the man jesus is seated at the right hand of the father and the bible lets us know that a time will come we will hear of that loud trumpet it says to comfort one another is the return of jesus christ is not supposed to be a scary event no the return of jesus christ is an event that we should look forward to with passion and with joy the glorious reconnection 
Someday, whether we like it or not, this life will fold like a curtain. Listen to me. One glorious morning, we will wake up wanting to do our thing as always. And suddenly, it will happen. Listen, it will not happen the way movies told you it will happen. They didn't read the Bible well. It will be so fast. The Bible says like the twinkling of an eye. Before you know it, there will be a mass disappearance of people. You come to me for counseling, you won't find me. I'm gone. Yes, sir. The fact that you are there is a sign that when I make the altar call, you should run and come. Let me tell you this. The moment there is that glorious exodus, you will see people run to church in confusion. The Bible you will leave behind. People will run and hold it and say, what is happening? The Bible will suddenly become a bestseller. It will be the most accurate roadmap from thence. No other book, no other thing will matter. And we'll meet with him. And we'll say, Savior, we believed you. And we spent our life making the world know. Listen. The issue of the gospel is not a task of an evangelist alone. You have to understand this. This is why we labor day and night to see that this glorious gospel, the global harvest, because a day is coming, whether you like it or not, Jesus Christ will return and the Bible says the remainder of the harvest together as a family. That would be the unleashing of catastrophe on earth. Catastrophe that will make Saddam Hussein look like an angel. What a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see Jesus. We'll sing and shout the victory when we all get to heaven what a day of rejoicing that will be when we all see jesus will sing but your assignment now is to believe that he died your assignment is to believe that when he went to hell he went there for you please listen to what i'm telling you regardless who you are regardless what religion and for those of you who are watching me from all around the world i respect your spiritual convictions but what you are hearing is not an opinion of a religion a day will come everybody will believe everybody in hell today is a believer the only thing is that they believe too late so when we celebrate easter yes eat the chicken eat celebrate with people but let there be a consciousness if jesus is not savior if jesus is not lord if Jesus is not king, there is nothing to celebrate. And then if that has happened to you, then you must ask yourself, am I fulfilling the other part? Because he says, on the strength of this consciousness, go. And there are many ways to go. There are those who go physically and labor in the vineyard. There are those who finance them as they go. They trust God for grace and they communicate resources. Don't, don't please feel at ease. I'm not raising any money at all. We love God and we fear God. But let me tell you sincerely. What gives value to these mundane things that we pursue on earth is to what degree it contributes to kingdom come. No matter what you have, if there is no bearing, if there is nothing in it, whether it's a political position, business, family, education, certificate, I respect your pedigree but if there is nothing in your achievement that is contributing to this goy mission i assure you you are not being part of god's program 
not everybody will be a pastor an apostle an evangelist but the consciousness of the global harvest this is not a church affair oh how that the father's heart bleeds every day where are the men and the women where are those who will go where are those who will make this happen can i tell you this there are over we're getting close to eight billion people on earth and only about 2.6 if i'm not mistaken are professing christians that that's including those who don't know what they are doing all together just from a statistical point now i'm saying it sincerely look up that's a serious issue we keep teaching and saying one day jesus will come do you not know that scripture declares that his coming is tied to our seriousness over the global harvest why will jesus come for only 2.6 million billion people what happens to the remaining what happens to your uncle what happens to your auntie it is painful to stand at the shores of eternity and see someone you so love at the other side brothers and sisters hear me i bring you a very powerful easter message before i minister for a few minutes and we're done if we remove jesus out of the question everything we're doing we can teach kingdom that's wonderful i shared with them in lagos and i said any other thing you, if you worship the four living creatures it's still idolatry if you worship the throne it's still idolatry if you worship the 24 elders it's still idolatry if you worship heaven it's still idolatry you worship anointing it's still idolatry you worship a man of god it's still idolatry for there is no other name under heaven given unto men by which we must be saved the consciousness of the global harvest is gradually eroding our minds the local assembly is supposed to be the receiving place for souls that are won so that they now be matured and grounded are we together now yes church came because of the harvest that means that people are saved and they are brought to church then they are matured they are mentored through the ministry of the fivefold they now mature they experience the victory of christ themselves then among the many other things they are involved with they now go back and also become part of the team that makes that global harvest happen some of you here god has trusted you with wealth understand the purpose of it some of you god has trusted you with tremendous influence understand the purpose of it some of you god has trusted you with all kinds of political strength understand the purpose of it some of you god has trusted you with business acumen you are veterans in business understand the purpose of it nothing finds its meaning outside of thy kingdom come project it is this global harvest that gives credence to everything so if you are praying lord give me prosperity you are praying with respect to kingdom lord give me a political position with respect to kingdom god is only interested in how what you are asking for will contribute to kingdom come up from the grave the hymn says he arose with the mighty triumph over his foe the bible says he arose the victor from the dark domain and he lives forever together with his saints to reign scripture declares paul mentoring the church in ephesus he told us that today we have been raised up with christ jesus is no longer the only begotten he's now the firstborn of we the begotten beloved of the father what is the implication of this that number one we have peace with god number two we are now one with christ the bible says so listen the bible says so your oneness with christ is the basis of your authority is the basis of the spiritual power that comes upon your life you become a blessing when you understand you are one with christ these hands are ordinary hands but not when you walk with the consciousness 
that I am one with Christ. Then the ordinary hands become supernatural. These lips are ordinary lips of clay, but not when you are one with Jesus. They become supernatural. Literally, the reality of the divine life comes from the consciousness of your oneness. And the Bible says, he that is joined to the Spirit of God is one spirit. It's a salt covenant, inseparable. Are we blessed? Dominion is now restored. Creation should listen to you. It should submit to the sovereign grace that has been placed upon your life. Listen to me, brothers and sisters. I bring you a real message of hope and a message of power. Jesus is the center and the focal point of the Christian's pursuit. Jesus, not ministry. We will teach other aspects of the kingdom life as a tool for maturing the saints. But tonight, from my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. From my heart to the heavens, Jesus be the center. It's all about you. Yes, it's all about you. Jesus be the center of your church. Jesus be the center of your church. From beginning to the end, it will always be, it's always been you, Jesus. Listen, return back home with this consciousness. Gather your children together and tell them, look, I gave you money, I gave you education, but I need to present Jesus. He died and he rose. Today he is alive. I believe in Jesus. This is why we do the things that we do. To see that we become contributors to this global harvest. It's the reason why we trust him for greater levels of his grace. So the sick can be healed. So that the, every miracle, every manifestation of the miraculous. is not just promoting the man of God. It's not just promoting the ministry. There is a message behind it. Jesus is Lord. Enthroned. So whilst we begin to pray. And God starts changing people's lives. Some of you overnight, it will do you like a dream. That a captivity of years will suddenly fade away. This time, listen. Don't just celebrate the miracle. Read the letter that that miracle brought. I am Lord. Exalted. Reminds me of my encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ. It remains ever fresh. It's an encounter that never fades. That face that I saw, you can look at it for the rest of your life and not be tired. It's not like men that I look at your shoe, I look at this, I'm tired. No. I'm about to make an altar call and then we'll pray. This resurrection day, you should not walk back with the chains that came with you. Because it is true that he is risen. The resurrection is what gave us justification. Now that we are justified, we have access to all the dimensions of grace. The Bible says, let us come boldly to the throne of grace. That we may obtain mercy and find grace to help in time of need. Are we together? I know... That there are people here, you sang, thank God for the brilliant worship team. And all the mighty things that had happened here. But you are in this auditorium, thousands of you. You are outside, all of the overflows down. The thousands of people following from around the world. We must get to the point where we make Jesus the desire of nations. Not just ministry, Jesus. We must make Jesus become the 
the focal point in this city wherever you are do not allow this significant day to pass whilst you're seated inside and outside the spirit of the living god is talking to you and he's saying you need jesus not just as a religious experience now probably there are some of you you once gave your life to jesus but right now looking at your life you know that you need to come to him again aside from those here at the balcony every other overflow i would request when i make the call that you just walk to your projector screen and then those outside to those online you can follow very carefully i'm going to count one to five and i want you to leave your seat sincerely if you're saying apostle i need jesus as a matter of life i'm not pretending it he will win that war no matter where you are no man condemns you this is home come one two keep coming celebrate them as they come You laid aside your majesty, gave up everything for me, suffered at the hands of those you have created. You took all my guilt and shame when you died and rose again. Now today you reign in heaven and now exalted. I really want to worship you, my God. You have won my heart and I am yours. Forever and ever, I will love you. You are the only one who died for me. Gave your life to set me free. So I lift my voice to you. Jesus is still calling people don't sit back and say we came there are so many people and I'm ashamed no leave your seat and come celebrate them as they come outside all the overflows down those following online from the US to Europe to Asia all over the world he calls you today this is the greatest gift we can give his majesty to celebrate this day Someday when we stand before him, we will see everyone who is out here. And we will rejoice. What a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we'll sing. Don't let the devil condemn you. This is home. You are not coming to a funeral. This is where you exchange your weakness for his strength. This is where you exchange your limitations. This is where you exchange every cost for his strength. Hallelujah. Let's take it up. You know, I'm looking at an adorable baby here that came with her mother. And I almost feel like just grabbing that lady to lift her up. I've got a message from the Lord, hallelujah, a message unto you I bring, it is recorded in his word, hallelujah, it's only that you look and leave, sing it with me, look and leave, my brother leave, look to Jesus. Right and leave. We've got the message from the Lord. Hallelujah. It's only that you do. The Bible.
Bible declares, For God so loved the world that he gave then his one and only begotten. Today he is the firstborn of we the begotten. To the end that whosoever believes in him, the Bible says he should not perish but have everlasting life. I thank you for the courage to come. It takes a lot of courage. Please lift your right hand with me as high as you can to the heavens. Jesus is standing here. I want you to make this declaration. Let it be from the depth of your heart and let it be in truth. Some of you are crying. Don't be ashamed of your tears. You're before Jesus. Say after me, Lord Jesus. One more time, say, Lord Jesus. Thank you for your death. Thank you for your resurrection. Tonight, I have heard your word and I declare that I love you with all my heart. I declare, according to the authority of scripture, that Jesus from today and forever is my Lord, my Savior, and my King. I declare that from today, I walk in victory. Satan, take your hands away from my life. He's hearing you say it again. Satan, take your hands from my life. I declare that I am a child of God. I go forward ever and backward never. Amen and amen. amen. Praise the name of the Lord. Father, as a trophy of honor, we present to you these souls. It is a joy to see them come to become part of this global family. And Lord, we thank you. Because no man comes to you except you draw them. The eloquence of a preacher cannot draw people. It is the goodness of God that leads men to repentance. Therefore, Lord, I pray that you will keep them. I commend them to the ministry of the Spirit and the ministry of the Word. I declare that you walk in the newness of life from today. In the name of Jesus. Now, very quickly, this is what I want you to do. There's someone waving the placard. There's a counselor there. Please, I will request all of you in concert, just follow the counselor, the placard. They'll just have your details very quickly and you'll return to your seat. Can we honor them as they go? Koinonia, is this the best you can do? Celebrate them. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me, lives in me. Your love that rescued the earth lives in me, lives in me. That's a profession of faith. Same power that conquered the grave lives in me lives in me your love that rescued the earth lives in me lives in me speak forth your profession of faith same power that conquered the grave lives in me let every infirmity hear you let every situation hear you your love that rescued me lives in me chapter 2 and verse 14 we're going to pray the bible says having spoiled principalities and powers 
blotting out every handwriting and ordinance that was against us which was contrary to us he took it out of the way nailing it to his cross 15 it says and having spoiled principalities the word spoiled there means to plunder them he made a show of them openly triumphing over them in it we're going to pray and we're going to shake off everything provided it was nailed to the cross it must be nailed in your life today are you ready to pray lift your voice in one minute and declare when you rose again everything that was not god died and i declare by the spirit of grace i am a child of god and everything that is not with the christ must let me go now lift your voice and pray Well, pray. Someone pray. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome, babe. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Declare to the realm of the spirit. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every failure must come down. Every sickness must come down. Every delay must come down. Every cross, every yoke. He wears the victor's crown. Sing it from your heart. Every high thing must come down. Every song goes down be broken. You wear the people's crown. You are the man. the voice you are the Every high thing must come down. Every song goes down be broken. You wear the people's crown. You are the man. You are the man. Every high thing must come down. Every song goes down be broken. You wear the people's crown. Every high thing must come down. Every song comes down. You rock and you roll. The mix is around. You are the God. You are the God. Hallelujah. Now listen to me. Everything that is not of God, that is in this place and in your life, is about to give up now. Listen. Please do not keep quiet. In the next one minute, I like you to call by name everything you know was nailed to the cross that is a concern in your life and tell it in the name of jesus it's time to go poverty was nailed to the cross causes and yokes delay was nailed to the cross is someone praying koinonia pray inside outside following online decree and declare we establish the victory of the christ over situations and circumstances over my health over my children over my job i declare up from the grave he arose in victory and a partake of that victory politicians pray business people pray heads of parliament pray break every pain every handwriting every cost Every yoke, every manipulation of darkness, I come against you by the power that raised Christ from the dead. This is the time to pray. Declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Pray for your children. They come under the city of Christ. Pray for your job, your business. Your ministry. Pray for your family. Time to step into a new season. The victory of Jesus. Total defeat over death. Total defeat over sickness. 
Hallelujah. Look at me. Look at me. When they came to look for his body, they said he is risen. He is no longer here. That means I can't be, I can't be where you knew me yesterday and where you met me yesterday. The Bible says up from the grave. He arose. Kali kaparuta siata. You are going to declare your advancement in Christ. Lord, I reject this position. I declare by the Spirit, prophetically, I'm moving forward. I was raised up. I must rise up. I was raised up. Now I must rise up in destiny. Never remaining down. Never remaining limited. Someone pray. You came to church to pray. Make decree. Husband and wife, pray. Business people, pray. Decree and declare. We establish victory over this home, over this ministry, over this family. You are not wasting your time. You are ascending levels in the spirit. This is Koinonia. As you pray, Jesus Christ, the Son of the Living God, the grave could not hold him. The grave cannot hold you. Failure could not hold him. Failure cannot hold you. Hallelujah You have won the victory Hallelujah This I know You have won it all for me That could not hold you back you are the reason king. Your sister is majesty. Hallelujah. Who is Gideon? I'm hearing a name Gideon. Who is Gideon? Gideon. I'm hearing a name Gideon. Where are you coming from? Gariki. Gariki. Where? Gariki. 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 Yes. You're Gideon. What's your name? I want to pray for you. I'm seeing the Lord bring a very great miracle to the family of Gideon. As a result of this supernatural miracle. Miracles are happening here. Miracles are happening here. Is your name Gideon? My family name. Your father. Yes. In the name of Jesus Christ, I stretch my hands towards you. According to the word of the Lord, I decree and declare the grace that establishes the victory of Christ over your lives and your families. Take that grace now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we are talking of the power that raised Christ here from the dead. Help them, please. Please, ushers, please let's be sensitive. We are talking of the power that raised Christ from the dead. That you will never be the same. The visitation comes to your family, comes to you. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to pray, please I want you to bring them out. The Lord is showing me 25 people. I'm seeing the number 25. These people have gone through circles. I'm seeing repeatable patterns 
over their lives and their family what is happening to someone is what is happening to another person unconnected right now i'm seeing fire just resting on people father inside and outside i declare that everyone here at this resurrection day bring them out who is under the yoke of patterns patterns of witchcraft patterns of devilish activities at the count of three in the name of jesus may that fire rest from you bring them out one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire please help them whether you are an usher or not the benefits of easter setting the captives free i stretch my hands again across the balcony the overflows anyone here you came from koinonia and there is a pattern of witchcraft that will not let you go will not let your family go in the name of jesus the christ of god you come on that judgment the judgment of the christ bring them out everyone lift your voice and begin to pray please pray victory is being established in our life Enough is enough. There must be an opening of the gates. Kata la kata 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 kata. If it is true that he made a public show of principalities, if it is true that every cost and every ash kata 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 prospered over there, it must come to an end over your life. Now look up, please. I'm still praying. There are people here, good things come to you, but just when you are about to handle it, failure, even at the edge of success, I'm seeing fire fall, my God. Anyone under the sound of my voice, the spirit that is back of it, here in the name of the resurrected Christ, we declare they catch fire now. Bring them out. Oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah yeah oh yeah 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 oh yeah yeah Hallelujah Now look up please The Lord is breaking patterns of death there are families every year you must bury someone in the name of jesus i declare if there is any family that death is eyeing now i declare and decree death passes over your family now we are praying The Lord is healing someone right now. We'll soon wrap up, but I'm seeing someone. You have an issue with your back. This is what the Lord is ministering to me. I don't know if it's whatever issue it is. Check it right now. The power of God is touching you. Check it right now. The power of God is touching you. Someone, I don't know if you are wearing a, a neck collar. Is it a neck collar or a bracelet or whatever it is? You have a problem with your neck. Check it right now. A miracle is happening to you i'm about to pray for the stick i believe in miracles i believe in the victory of jesus i don't know who i'm speaking to anyone sitting on what is yours i come by the rod of a higher priesthood hear me i speak as one sent by god anyone sitting on what is yours right now i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn i overturn for families i overturn for businesses i overturn for politicians i overturn
faith i'm hearing a name faith who is faith faith you're wearing a black scarf faith who is that please let ushers let's help so that we don't make this place rowdy please please can we have some ushers here so that we don't make this place rowdy please don't just come out carelessly Make it my, make it my, make it my. Me muki, me iko, me it my. Me it my, me it my, me it my. Ba, wani my sister look at me shout jesus as loud as you can jesus out of her life now never to return again help this one in the name of jesus anyone here who is under any influence that is not of the christ i stand by the spirit of grace and i decree and declare unto you this night it comes to an end now there is someone here you are looking for your brother he's been missing where is that person your brother has been missing please hear what i'm saying don't just come out at random god bless you you can return back to your seat i pray for you this one's in front please quickly we have a few minutes we have to wrap up very quickly the lord is showing me someone whose brother has been missing it's time to call them back home how long yes who, who else again please let's hurry up we have to save time how long what's his name he been about house for he been about house for where Bukuma. we are from river state calm down my, my sister you are before jesus the first miracle who is this gentleman are you together My brother, two visions. you are together oh, okay come my sister the first miracle is not to the person missing the first miracle is to you i'm seeing a door open before you what do you do what do you do i'm a civil servant you're a civil servant yes i'm seeing you start a business this is what the lord is showing me and this business will move you in a way that will surprise you i stretch my hands and i pray take that grace right now in the name of jesus christ you will never be the same never be the same everyone who is missing and still alive no matter where they are across the globe the grace that took the animals from where they were and brought them to noah's ark i command in the name of jesus that grace finds your loved ones and brings them back home in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ in the name of jesus christ is it jephthah i'm hearing a name jephthah jephthah you are up you are in one of these balconies jephthah is there someone like that Please let him come. I want to just speak to him and then we're done. Lay your hands, those trusting God for healing. I want to pray right now. As we worship in your presence, there is healing. The Holy Spirit's gentle touch is flowing. Jesus, I Jesus, your name. What's your name, sir? Jephthah. From where? Ocean State. I want I to pray die. for you. Next month, May, is going to be a strange month for you and your family. Amen! Take that grace right now. In the name of Jesus Christ. Listen, 
one of the graces that God has put here is a grace that insists that you'll never be at the same level you have to believe this whilst we do not serve God because of things our attention is on Jesus but there are consolations to our Christian experience we don't serve God and remain at the same level sir doctor sir that's madam I'm seeing an anointing coming on your wife dr. Shwaibu sir I'm seeing the anointing and the Lord is saying that there is a dimension of the prophetic that is on her and there is a dimension of favor he's also bringing upon her I stretch my hands by the Spirit of grace and in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord will begin to open to you very strange things in dreams visions prophetic encounters in the name of Jesus Christ in the name of Jesus Christ help her please there is someone here your father is a member now I, I know that you most likely will find a lot of people but I am seeing the Lord is asking me to pray an avert assassination from, I'm seeing this is this is a member of House of Assembly Federal House this is someone on a journey and I'm seeing like an accident and all of a sudden they just kill this man for nothing I'm not a prophet of doom we are ministers of life we stand in the name of Jesus there may not be time to call that person and there may be multiple people and this is not to inflict fear please hear me don't misunderstand what we're saying God reveals so that he will redeem in the name of Jesus Christ whoever plans evil for you may their evil fall upon them by the power of the Holy Spirit how many of you here you don't have to come out just lift your hands you are trusting God for supernatural jobs I just sense that there is a grace in this place please believe it you've had the testimonies God is a God of miracles in the name of Jesus, some of you are standing for your loved ones. I declare by the Spirit that raised Christ from the dead. Between now and the next three months, by the power of prophecy, return with strange testimonies. Return with strange testimonies. Hallelujah. Listen, when God granted me the grace and the privilege to lie down in Baba Deboye's prayer room, I was alone in that prayer room and when I rested my head I said Lord the only grace that I desire in this place even though you have shown me mercy the grace for answered prayer you have placed something upon this father of faith that was one of the things I told the Lord I said since you granted me the privilege to lie down in the same prayer room where he lies to pray my prayer is that what you placed upon him that makes these declarations to not fall to the ground may it come upon me and I'm standing now to speak to you in the name of Jesus Christ who is the helper of men please hear me every door that has refused to open over your life and over your destiny in the name of Jesus if the door of the grave opened then may the door of your destiny open If the door of the grave opened, may the door of your destiny open. 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 Ephata. Open. Open. Katus Kateleketaba. Open. Open. We break every lock. Open. Go forward. Advance. In the name of Jesus. The Bible says an angel came from heaven rolled away the stone when it was time for Lazarus to come out he said roll the stone before manifestation the stone that blocks you blocks your visibility there are stones that sit on people's businesses sit on their career in the name of Jesus 
the same angels that rolled away that stone we declare from heaven by the ministry of angels every stone stopping your visibility in the name of Jesus the Christ let it be rolled away now hallelujah let me tell you an interesting story something happened while I was coming in I was on my way and in the aircraft I was tired just wanted to rest on my way here and then the man who was sitting close to me he probably may even be here listen all of a sudden this man looks at me and he says sir your face looks familiar and I stretched my hands I said I'm Joshua Selman he said I can't believe this and he sent his wife a text and said you can't believe who I'm sitting close to and he showed me something you know these things they do on social media maybe a picture of somebody running in shock something like that and I told him I said sir I don't know you but whoever prayed for you before you got on this plane you should find that person and bless that person because I told him as soon as you sit down here all of a sudden my eyes were opened I began to talk to him about things about his life and I said but look how favor can locate a man 50 minutes flight alone with this man talking with him praying with him let me tell you you see but this favor you see please listen listen favor can take you and the helper of your destiny and just put you together believe what I'm telling you I'm saying that because I want I will never stop praying it until your life becomes an expression of the favor of God hallelujah I once had a story of I think a general also in the army or maybe some big man general and he wanted to send a text to someone that he had discussed the issue of employment for someone then he sent it to a wrong number now listen the person who got it rejoiced and he replied he said thank you sir and the general now felt bad and said how do I the way this man has said thank you so many times how do I now tell him you are not the one listen listen this is a true story that someone finished laboring just to send a text and say mr. man come the Spirit of God said no someone is there is a grace on a, a person hear me Abuja is not a very big city the voice of God is loud enough to reach all the six local governments in this city and it is able to fish out whoever has been anointed not everybody capable was sent to help you not everybody available was sent to lift your hands Joseph of Arimathea was there to help Jesus come down from the cross to the grave Simon the nigger was there to help carry the cross even if you are Jesus you still need help in this journey of destiny the Holy Ghost is called a helper I want to pray for people here because you are carrying loads by yourself financial loads intellectual loads some of you have court cases and there is no one to help you some of you have issues you need help in this kingdom who hates you does not matter but believe me when i tell you who likes you matters i stand by the god of heaven and i pray whoever must speak for you whoever must arise by the spirit of god here at this ground in the name that is above all names i place grace on your life May your helpers find you. We call them from the parliament. We call them from the presidency. We call them from their homes. Let me find coincidences. Connect you to them. In the name of Jesus Christ. I don't know what led me to pray this prayer but you see we don't just pray carnally I believe in what I'm saying listen to me 
there are some of you your dreams and your visions will remain in the realm of the spirit until god is able to find a man directed through prophecy to your life my life is a product of what helpers can do one genuine helper sent by god can turn your life around hear me not every intelligent person has the luxury of finding visibility among kings there are times you are capable but you don't have access to the gate you will need someone who is already at the gate oh joseph even though you can interpret dreams if the wine presser does not talk to the king to call you help her please help her please we're wrapping up but please understand every time you come here there is no service that is regular god is doing something definite it's called koinonia when god is speaking he's addressing specific cases see i bow my knees to my god whom i serve you don't have to kneel but i pray for you anybody who needs to be in your life this week i call upon the god of my covenant may they show up for you may they show up for you koinonia Daria, Abuja, Global, may they show up for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. The ministry of destiny help us are real believe what I tell you you don't have to know them you can wake up one morning and someone can call you and say God gave us an instruction that every month for the rest of your life this is what we should do for you there is such a thing like that it's not a license for laziness but don't listen to that narrative that you must suffer and walk through everything what then is the excellency of the cross Please hear me. There are some of you in this city, Abuja. You are the only one fending for yourself. If God does not send help, you will compromise because of pressure. I pray for you again. May my God raise helpers for you. May my God raise men and women to help you. Please listen to me simple things become very easy when a help is in your life easy things become difficult when you are standing on your own listen a man of god was about to start ministry and he went to god's servant bishop david oedeko for an advice and he looked at him i'm not yoruba but he spoke to him he said this is the advice i will give you and he spoke in yoruba he said never fight alone that was the advice you fight alone without any backing you will die alone there are many of you fighting spiritual battles there is no prophetic backing that is standing with you listen please hear what i'm telling you you are in the midst of people you know if they have a chance to kill you if you're a politician here please hear me it takes more than the ability to deliver a mandate the king priest prophet spiritual formation can never be broken unbelievers know this you are a businessman you are in the midst of people you are calling upon the name of the lord you know these people have vowed god knows your heart he sees your heart he knows that jesus will be exalted through your life and here they come this is the advantage of the prophetic to stand in partnership with the holy ghost as a support system everything fighting you fighting your family fighting your destiny in the name of jesus christ it goes down now it goes down now it goes down now two more prayers and we're done two more prayers and we're done The Lord is bringing restoration. Listen, there are doors that opened before. 
it opened once you tasted of the blessing of that door it may be access to a man it may be access to a helper it may be access to a level of grace i'm speaking prophetically some of you tasted of the grace for the miraculous you tasted of certain anointings you tasted of the grace for prayer and intercession you tasted of the grace to pass you could wake up in the night and pray for five hours but something happened like the hair of samson let me pray for someone receive a restoration of grace everything that was once in your life and has gone back i call it forth by prophecy i call it forth by prophecy i call it forth by prophecy please hear me i'm saying it again i don't know what left you i stand by the power of the holy ghost and in the name of jesus here at this resurrection service i declare let it return to you now relationships return finances return help us return grace is return opportunities return Final prayer for tonight. Look at me. Yesterday night, I was so tired, I just wanted to rest. And the next thing I saw was someone who was standing and I just saw like knives, knives on him, like incisions on the body. Listen to me. I believe in this season, Satan is, is working to use sickness as a tool to destroy people's finances. Hear what I'm telling you. I'm speaking to you under the unction of prophecy. Mysterious infirmities that just come out of nowhere and start wasting your resources. You will treat it, it will not go until your finances dry down or for some of you who seem to be the breadwinners of families all of a sudden the devil afflicts those around you and he puts pressure on you the waster we must take authority over the waster the bible says a body has thou prepared for me every parent here you will not bury your children every parent here you will not bury your children He said, thou shalt not be afraid of the arrows that fly by day. The noisome pestilence, the destruction that wasted in noonday. Please hear me. Infirmity is a spirit. In the name of Jesus, I declare. Every manifestation of the spirit of infirmity over lives and families that the waster is taking advantage of to dry up your resources, frustrate your Christian experience, and cause you to count God unfaithful. We declare that spirit banished from your life. Every sick body here be healed. Every sick body be healed. Blood conditions be healed. Migraines be healed. Bone conditions be healed. Help them please, help that woman. Be healed now. Be healed now. Be healed now every negative report that is a death sentence over your life or you have loved ones in the name of Jesus we cancel it right now peptic ulcer be healed migraines be healed Thank you Jesus thank you Heavenly Father lift your hands and just wave it to him as an act of worship Zaria wave your hands Abuja wave your hands our global family 
Thank you, Jesus. We bless you. You are mighty. We give you praise. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now listen to me. I give you one assurance in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord. By the time you are coming here next week, you will return with testimonies that will dumbfound you. Your results will be so compelling. Even people who would not pay attention to Jesus will follow you and say, I must find out where you came to that God is visiting you this much. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus. Amen and amen. Please be seated for a minute. We're almost done. Be seated for a minute. We're almost done. Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Now, before we share the grace, for all those who made it for the school of ministry, you're going to be receiving a text message. And then, when you receive that text message, um, they would let you know when you are going to come. Now, I don't have the list for some of our dignitaries to appreciate them. Please forgive me, but let me just welcome, um, forgive me, sir. Um, we have here the son of Dr. Oji Uzokalu. You here? Thank you, sir. Thank you. And the wife, blessings to you. Let's celebrate them. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. It's an honor. Thank you. Um, I know that there are lots of dignitaries. Forgive me. I'm not sure I have the list here, but we'll meet immediately after the service. Please, some of our dignitaries who came, don't be in a rush to go. I will meet with you just at the rotunda. Uh, by the way, please let me just give a word of caution as much as possible. Please, after service, everyone here is special and there is nobody here who uh, is looked low or down upon but it is good that honor be given to whom honor is due so after the grace sometimes when we move a few of our dignitaries to see me please let's do well to not waylay them even if you knew them somewhere it's a different platform that brought them here and let's do well to please respect that protocol will that be fine praise the name of the lord now by next week we'll give we're still going to have a few worship ministers just come and be a blessing with us uh, and to us um, so we'll make we'll make that known so that we open up our hearts and then we receive of what god is doing praise the name of the lord now let me just give us one prophetic instruction and we're done please next week sunday next week sunday everyone as god grants you grace we're going to be waiting upon the lord Praise the Lord. We are going to wait upon the Lord. You can break before you come, but children can fast from, don't say they are young. Children can fast from 6 to 12. They can break and they can eat. Any adult should be able to stretch it through till 4. Praise the Lord. Um, except otherwise, if you have health concerns, pregnant women, don't worry, we are fasting for you in the name of Jesus Christ. Please, pregnant women and those who are on specific um, medical attention, you do not have to fast. I'm saying this, those following online, please, if you are under an intense treatment and the doctors are attending to you, don't worry. We are fasting the Lord. There is a grace that God wants to impart and he gave me that instruction while I was dressing up. So please, let's just obey the Lord. We are spiritual people. The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Have you been blessed? Please, after the grace, I want you to be careful. Sometimes people are clumsy, I'm told, just trying to come out. I know we have many doors here, but realize there are thousands of people. So let's do well to be patient. And then be sure to hold your bag, your Bibles, and leave with it. Please, do not leave anything here. Someone may steal it, and um, we may not be responsible for it. Praise the name of the Lord. God bless you. Rise up as we wrap up the service. I declare that your week starting is blessed in Jesus name you return with great and strange and mighty testimonies in the name of Jesus Christ everything lines up for you in Jesus name your hunger for spiritual things will never diminish 
your passion for the word of God will never go down the grace for prayer will never go down in the name of Jesus you go and you return a sign and a wonder in the name of Jesus Christ I pray let's share the grace after that just greet someone on your way out the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ the love of God the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us now and forevermore amen God bless you see you on Sunday Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. Do not keep the video to yourself. Share to as many as you can to help them bless. Check our homepage for more of our messages. Subscribe to the channel. Comment on it. Like it. See you on our next video. Bye. Pray. Pray. Pray for your destiny. Salaska de Bashka na kata branda kete kotos, kete branda kata pa kotos koto break kete kete kata. The phase of development, Lord, grant me the discipline.